Uh, did everybody have a chance to look at the, uh, the, um, the shop I sent you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so then what we'll do is I'll read the recap. You guys let me know what you want to buy, if anything at all. And then once we're done with those, we'll kind of keep going. How does that sound? Sorry, Steph? I think it was kind of rude, the shop, but that's cool. Kind of rude, the shop? Yeah, you get the bolts of slang and you give me a bow. <laughs> hey, I, I randomly generated that, so you can't say anything, okay? <laughs> so, it's equally fair because I'm not the one who actively made it. Anyways. <clears throat> Alright. Welcome back, everyone. So, we had one person missing from the last session, so let's just do a quick recap of everything we've managed to do in the last session. Alright. Seeking the ruins of Weirmouth, the players went to Harmonia to travel down the deserted town. When they arrived in the cold, mountainous village of Harmonia, they quickly found a, a convenience store in order to get winter supplies. The, cl the store's clerk was a sweet era Crocran lady who kindly sold the party some winter gowns and began to chat with them. They quickly learned that the journey would take multiple days, even I mean, due to the weather conditions and the downwards elevation of the deserted town. Due to this, it's the trip, and will become later. This wasn't before they learned some interesting information, however. A dragonboard caravan was recently spotted in the area. With some prodding for information, they learned that they seemed to have gone to the southern sector of the town. But the party decided to pursue a potential lead into Enigma's hood, the acclaimed leader, Aragard Nightswing. They entered the groin district and promptly went to his nightclub, T Titan's Delirium. Inside, they found the building to be jam-packed full of people, music, drinks, and drugs, a cesspool of hedonism. It didn't take long for the party to spot Aragard, having taken the club at a VIP table. Surrounded by loads of beautiful women. And Brian's character sat just on the table behind him and overheard him shamelessly indulging the girls with his characters and story. With his character and stories. Meanwhile, Amond and Stef I mean Amond, Stefan's character, spotted the rest of the club uh, for places of potential escape that Aragard would possibly flee to, should he need to. Under the cover well, of food... Hello? Hello? Am I good? Um, go back a second. Do you hear me, though? We can hear you now. Okay. Uh, I'll restart the paragraph. Uh, meanwhile, Amond, Stefan's character, scouted the rest of the club for places of potential escape that Aragard would potentially flee to should he need to. Under the cover of Brant's, uh, Brant's character spell, Invisibility, Eamon would soon find a bar that had lots of bartenders and a door that led to the back room. Reporting his finding to the other two party members, they devised a plan to lure Aragard out uh, and uh, to get him to leave the girls behind and enter the back rooms. Just... Um, just before they were, be they were going to begin this plan, Brand's character, Julius, would encounter an absurdly drunk man that would change up the plan up. Julius convinced the drunk man that he could have all the drinks he wanted if he just entered the room, uh, the back room uh, behind the bar. That this, that this heist would involve all of them and would yield one, uh, all the alcohol one could drink. Being so inebriated, the man thoughtlessly agreed. They all went to get, I mean, together to the bar, and Julius told the drunk man uh, that they would follow just behind him and that he should go first. He agreed, entering the door behind uh, the kitchen. Oh, wait, sorry. I read, I read that wrong. Anyways, he took off doing just as he was told, and he, I mean, he approached the bar, then promptly hopped the bar and entered the kitchen. Seizing the opportunity, Eamon snuck into the doorway, enduring the commotion while the bar and kitchen staff tried to wrestle the man out of the kitchen. Inside of the, I mean, of the break room, uh, inside, Savannah found a break room, a kitchen, a bathroom, a door for receiving, 
and the manager's office with the, with the name Aragard Nightswing embroidered on a golden nameplate. He stuck his way inside and found lots of documents relating to the business, but nothing seemed to be too unusual. He left the back room and began to speak with the party. He, he told them the layout of the back room. They then devised a new plan and set into motion. Julius used message on Aragard and told him that he had important information that, when, that was needed and he was needed in his office immediately. After a moment, Aragard excused himself from his guests and went to the office. Julius used invisibility on the full party and snuck behind the back door past the kitchen and into his office. After a moment, Aragard joined in, finding nothing but an empty room. He, went behind, he then went in and poured himself a drink and sat down. Baldrick, seizing the opportunity, sat down on a couch near him. But when he sat down, a loud squeaking sound came from the chair, which threatened his stealth. Quickly trying to regain control of the situation, Julius quickly began to speak to Aragard to distract him from the noise. Though he was startled from a voice coming from nowhere, he politely engaged com Julius to a conversation. Julius gave a false name to avoid Aragard learning his real name. After some conversation, it, was, it seemed to be that Aragard did not have any involvement with the Nicholas Hood, despite sw sources claiming he was. As a matter of fact, he had been actively working to stop their activity in the city. He had been framed. With the true leader now remaining a mystery, and the, p the party attempted to engage Aragard for more information about Enigma's Hood. Julius revealed to Aragard that the party had managed to kill Paul Keeler and even managed to retrieve his journal. Aragard quickly took up this book, read it, and began to disclose some of the names of information, uh, disclose some of the information he knew directly to Julius. He would even later purchase the book from the party. Having earned a small portion of trust, Aragard offered Julius a job. It was around this point Julius finally revealed himself. Aragard offered to provide information about Enigma's Hood to the party and that they would work together to take the organization, the organization down. But first, they would need to prove their loyalty and trustworthiness to him. In exchange for his services, the party would need to travel to the liver to kill a liver warthog and retrieve its hide and return it to him. He would pay for the quality of the pelt, and this would earn his support in taking on this endeavor. Julius agreed, which shocked Aragard, going as far to state, Are you sure you're up to my task? Julius responded, We have more people in my organization than just myself. Seizing his cue, Baldrick, while still invisible, placed a Titan's hand grenade onto the table, appearing, um, appearing to Aragard as if it manifested from nowhere. Taken aback by the sudden manifestation, Aragard welcomed Julius with grander appeal and offered a night of drinks to Julius by means of a coupon. Accepting, I mean, accepting the mission, Eamon appeared spontaneously from an indoor houseplant, took the coupon from Aragard's hands, thanked him, and proceeded to walk out with, so much, with not so much as another word. Julius tipped his hat again, I have many friends, and he proceeded to walk out with Baldrick. The players ended the session with a mild shopping spree, gathering items and resources they would need for the, vent I mean, for the mission in Deliver, even purchasing a map to the closest town to Deliver. We ended the session in heart, with plans to travel to Deliver for the next session. So I'm going to direct everyone's attention to the shop link I sent to the chat. This is your last chance to buy anything you want from heart before we depart. Before we depart. Yeah. I I thought that. I I see what you did there. <laughs> Heart before we depart. Uh, so, anyone want to buy anything? Brady says uh, he's good. I'll take the goggles of night. The dog goggles of night. Does it just give you night vision? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sixty feet. Great. How uh, how much does that cost? Uh, it says fifteen hundred. Mm hmm. Can I? That's a try good. and haggle. Can you try and haggle? So it says, yeah. how much was it, sorry? 1500 Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you want to do me a persuasion check, I'll roll myself, too. Oh, that was almost a nat 20, but it's only 15. Oh! 
I'll give it to you for... So you said it's 15, right? I'll give it to you for 13. I'll take it. And uh, Brady asked a question of, did he get any money from the last session? Because I don't remember how much I gave you. 5,000. 5,000? Yeah. I'll go 5,000. You hear that, Brady? Great. Okay. Um. Sorry, sorry, Brady. Um, you you weren't there. Minus one hundred and fifty. Uh, four thousand. Four thousand eight hundred and fifty. Okay. Um, is there anything anyone wants to do before we leave, or before? Sorry. Medallion of thought. Medallion of Thoughts. Is it... Uh, can you tell me what it does? It uh, allows me to... Um, cast the tech thoughts three times. Oh, okay, cool. Three. Is it regeneration on uh, long rest? Uh, every dawn I get a... I can roll a D, uh, 1d3 to get how many cards back. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Great. Uh, and that cost is... 3,000. 3,000. Alright, not bad. Good. All right. So, um, is that everything that you want to buy, Steph, or is there anything else? I'm good. All right, Brant. Anything you want to buy? Uh, no. Nope, I just bought that opal. I messaged you. About right, you did. Yes, you did. Thank you. And that is my money. <laughs> All right. Perfect. I'm All right. Perfect. So, the name of the town that you guys have found on your map, by the way. Was da, 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 da. God, this it's getting t Xavier. Xavier. Uh, X A V I E L. So, where is this? Basically, it is the closest village to the liver. This is kind of a village meant for people, for miners of heart or of, of liver. Uh, the nearest teleport gate is somewhere in the range of six hours to the mine, to the actual town. Oh, wait. So, you can take the teleport gate and then you travel an additional six hours before you make it to this town. Uh, it was kind of deliberately done like this because is anyone really going to be building a teleport gate close to a place that they know is dangerous? <laughs> um... That having been said, uh, right now it is approximately noon in the day, I would say. Um, so you could probably get there for maybe 6 p.m. So, sorry, you said it's noon right now? Yeah. So okay. Uh, so I take it, save you. Did uh, Aragard basically say go to save you, or is that just. Well, it Xavier is the closest town to Xavier uh, is the closest town to the liver, so it's the best course of action to go there. Okay, it's uh, somewhere to do some quick rough, restocks. I, I don't want exact numbers. So roughly how big? How long would it take to cross, cross from one end of the river to the other? Oh, it would take you multiple multiple days, like. Okay. It would take you weeks, probably. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, it's big, and I'm still working. I tried t tempering with the numbers of how big the world is. Didn't like what they came up with, so I'm still working on it. So, uh, I'll get back to you on that, but it'll take weeks to cross liver. Um, Nathan. Yeah. We... Did, did we purchase books about the liver, or did we take some books about the liver from... The library that we were just in, and the now you had down. found. Remember when you guys did that mission about the live books, the books that were alive? You guys managed to find one of the guides for miners of the liver, but that, um, given the price of how much they were willing to pay you, you guys decided not to steal the book, and yeah, yeah. right. Um, I forgot about that. Yeah. Well, Nathan. Well, maybe while people are doing their shopping, since I, I wouldn't necessarily say I finished the book, 
but I basically only have one thing I want to do. I would like to take any remaining time before we gather up and go anywhere. Go to a library mm -hmm. and try and find a book on the liver, and specifically a book on um, liver animals, specifically liver worm. Okay. Sure. I want to know if like I want to know if like within liver there's specific stomping grounds, breeding grounds, migrating paths, anything like that. Anything I can find on the liver warthog. So we're not aimlessly walking through the liver, and instead of encountering a warthog, we encounter a dragon. Of know? course. So yeah, I just, want, I just want to eliminate any. Sure. Issue. Now here's what I will say for this. Uh, this. This Hark wouldn't have these books for purchase because there is not really use to sell these books to the people of Hark because they're not the ones who have to deal with liver, right? That having been said, you could probably go to a library and read it for free. So I'm going to yeah. share it for you in the shared links tab. Now, this is by no means a complete list. And when I say by no means, I do mean it because I was going to work on it more throughout the week. But work was actually busy, so I didn't work on it as much as I wanted to. Point is, there are some things you should know about this book. Uh, these books are enchanted. Uh, every Archives of the Liver book has a magical spell on it. When pointed at a creature, it will display a hologram of jot notes of the creature and a category. Uh, you can. I created a, ta uh, a table for you guys just to see how these rankings would apply to real life animals, just so that way you have a bit of recommend, a bit of reference on specifics. Uh, yeah. So this is by no means complete, but I ran out of time, so I'm calling it okay enough there for now. Point is. Um, this journal seems to be a complete uh, as complete compendium of all creatures thus thus by recorded to to live in the liver. Uh, so, uh, sorry, real quick, I'm noticing that the war is not on here, so... Yeah. Is this... Can I... Oh, crap, that was the one thing I meant to put on there. Okay, yeah. well, uh, I know what it was supposed to be, right? Basically, okay. these warthogs exist within herds. Uh, these herds can exist within numbers between uh, 5 and 20. These herds travel together and are primarily herbivoristic, but can eat protein and meat and might actively hunt. They would be in the category range of about 4, I think. 4? Yes, 4. Yeah, about four. Um, one thing that is very notable about liver warthogs is that when attacked, the herd will collectively attack. So, any uh, any attempt to uh, what's the word? This is why they're not actively being bred outside of the liver. It's because these creatures. You can't just pull one organism, one creature away from the herd and slaughter it, right? Yeah, they, the entire herd will come after you. So, this is why the um, the ranking is as high as it is. Because they attack collectively. Uh, yeah. So, that was actually the one entry I meant to put in there, but apparently I forgot it. <laughs> Yeah. Um. Was, was there anything specific about uh, where, where specifically migrating grounds? They seem to, uh, herding and migrating migrating grounds seem to reflect our, uh, herbivorous growth, right? So where tall grasses and tall plains are, you're not going to find liver warthogs on any mountain ranges, or you're not going to find them in more oceanic parts or if they're they kind the herds kind of go with the grasslands uh and the grasslands are pretty separated amongst the liver so these things are 
one of the more common species in the liver. Kind of like deer in Ottawa, right? Like they're there, they're definitely there. Ah, mm. uh, yeah. Anyone have any more questions? No, no, I'm good. Okay. Cool. So, what say we? Well, I mean, I will try and try and take down as much as much of this information as I can. I'll put it into my notebook. Okay. I'm in the library, so I don't want to <laughs> never return it. Yep. Um, but I will try and get as much information about the warthog as I can. Sure. I'm getting, I'm getting the important stuff. Herd animal, tall grass areas, uh, risk level four. The, the, the important stuff. Of course. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, I would say that maybe takes you what, like maybe ten, twenty, thirty minutes. Yeah, I'm maybe fifteen. Sure. Um. All right. Uh, is there? What do you so? What do you say, guys? Do you want to try? I'm good to go. You're good to go. Okay. Do we want to try and make our way towards the liver? That's it. Cool. All right. So, using the first teleport gate outside of the liver, you guys immediately notice a difference from everywhere else you've been and this town. This town seems to have much less people in it. The houses seem to be more disrepair. Even six hours away from the liver, people aren't willing to migrate here. Town sizes are smaller. Peoples are smaller. People aren't as long-lived. Uh, though the people kind of are friendly enough, I'm not going to focus too much on the town of where you guys immediately warped. Going down to... Uh, beginning your trek towards Zariel, Zaciel, or I already forgot the name of how... Huh? Zaviel, thank you. Going towards your, your mission towards Zaviel, you guys pass some more residential places along the way. The the as you guys get further and further and further, you guys are noticing that the atmosphere around you is kind of building in humidity, and people seem to be a little bit more on edge, a bit more focused on what's directly overhead. Uh, villages are more spread out people aren't as loose as they would be within heart or the groin. People are attentive. Aware of their surroundings. Uh, at around 6.15 you begin, you actually uh, make it towards the small town. I'm gonna ring everyone here. Oh, nope. On button. So, After about six hours, you guys make your way towards Xaviel. You immediately notice a change in atmosphere here. The, at the humidity in the air is high, and the buildings look run down, shoddy, as if they've been repaired multiple times. Rust on some metal. Um, these buildings are mostly metallic, without windows. Um, they have rust on some parts. They have patch done patchwork done these buildings are run down a bit more shoddy and as you guys kind of begin to progress throughout the village it kind of seems like a ghost town no one really is around but you do hear well if you let me speak <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> but you do hear the distant voices of seven people they kind of seem to be talking amongst themselves in low, hushed voices. And they kind of see you approaching, and all of them kind of cock their heads and say, um, an older-looking dwarf man steps up. Based on his insignia on his wrist, you can see he's a barbarian. He goes, Hello, are you lost, par chance? May I help you, perhaps? Uh, sir, uh, my name is uh, Julius, and me and my friends here, we're on a bit of an adventure. 
Um, and um, get too excited. Oh, okay. This is that liver make mess, but we are on the hunt for some liver warthogs. Some liver warthogs? You're here for the cosmetic industry. What an interesting turn of phrase. Do you perchance know how deadly this environment is? I would recommend that you perhaps reconsider. I think we have <laughs> taken some of the possibilities of danger and death, and we are more excited than <laughs> He laughs. <laughs> Thank you for your concern, but... Well, can't say I didn't warn you. More hands the merrier. Why don't you come over here? Introduce us to yourselves. Uh, he <laughs> he's going to be like... So he, he invites you guys towards the campfire, and you can see um, a bunch of them actually kind of gathered by this campfire. Um, here, hang on one sec. I'm going to stage some people here. Can I do this? Thank you. Control. Nope. Stage. 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 I can only have up to five. That's okay. So, uh, basically, he, I mean, as he begins, as you guys begin to approach the campfire, he gets a better look at you and he goes, I'll be damned. A dragonborn, a turtle, a human, and um, please excuse my arrogance, but I'm not quite sure which you are. He points to you, Julius. Uh, I'm human. Hmm. Human. Okay. I'll be damned. I've never seen a turtle among these parts. Very odd and very strange. Uh... Brady, are you going to say... I get that a lot. <laughs> I mean, might, might I ask how you arrived here? Yeah, the same as everyone else arrived here. I came through that portal. <laughs> he laughs. All right, then. Well, where are my manners? Perhaps I should introduce myself. My name... Nathan. Yes? Just, just before we get into that spiel... Mm -hmm. Can I adjust my cloak to cover my hands? Your hands? Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would like to try to stealthily cast Detect Thoughts. Detect Thoughts? Who do you want to detect thoughts on? On the leader we're talking about. Okay. Um, so that would be Bailey Comer. Uh, and yeah, first of all, give me a stealth check, please. 18. All right. Um. So detect thoughts. Basically, he's thinking to himself, "Huh, what an interesting group of people. Do they understand what they're really getting themselves into? Gosh, the amount of friends I've lost along the way. But more hands, the merrier. The more people that join us, the more risk we can avoid. Perhaps they're skilled fighters, despite not seeming so." He seems cautious of you guys, but welcomes, but is welcoming, as the kind of general vibe. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so he's going to introduce himself. Yeah, my name is Bailey Comer. I uh, I've been uh going to the liver. I've been traveling to the liver for some thirteen years now. Uh. This is my first lieutenant. Uh, not you. Lorian, Nor Lorian Nav. Um, after him, you will see. And then he'll, he'll pike up for himself. Hans Murdoch, nice to meet you. Uh, this man seem uh, ha okay, so first of all, Lorian is a human. Uh, and based on his, uh, class crest, you can see that he is a fighter. Uh... I'm just bring up my story sheet here. Yes. Yeah, he is a fighter. Then, uh, Sariel Chekrov, the blue dragonborn, will speak up. He'll say, 
Hello, I'm Soriel Chekhov. I'm uh, fi I mean, I'm going to deliver to assist my mother and father. Uh, <clears throat> after that, you see a younger-looking man. This man seems careless, naive. He doesn't really seem to be engaging, taking the whole situation as a joke. <laughs> he laughs and goes, <laughs> "My name, Victorian. Remember the name." I'm sure I will be famous for my exploits in here. He, he flexes his arms. He only seems to be about 20 years in age. Uh, after that, you guys don't really seem to in him... You don't really see him interacting with much, but there's a man in the off distance. He seems to be muttering, muttering to himself while, ho while clutching a, um, a druidic staff in his hands. This tiefling... Uh, is wearing a big pair of glasses and muttering quietly to himself. He's a, uh, ba uh, Bailey will pike up. That one there? That's Pal Ch Chubba Kirka. We call him Chubbo for short. Uh, and finally the last person, um, he'll kind of pike up by himself and he goes, ha ha ha. And for myself, you've probably heard my exploits. I am the great bard Logan Valvey. Pleasure to be making your acquaintance. I am a... Some kind of... oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> By all means. Don't finish. I oh. Didn't mean to... oh, sorry. I'm here to create stories, to create masterpieces, to share the world once over. Like, done? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Is this you being um, done? Uh, I'd like to roll some kind of like history and say, like, have I ever heard of the, the stories of Logan? Uh, yeah, roll history check. Yeah, okay. That's the... That's 11? <laughs> okay, he is a lesser bard who's performed at low, en low to end, uh... Low to middle end pubs, diners. People, some people like him, but the vast majority of people call his stories horseshit. <laughs> he so, makes up so stories. I, hmm? So I have heard of him. You have heard of him, yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, but he's also known for making up stories. Bailey's gonna pike back up and he says, Well, now that you know us, um, I must say, I would like to learn all your names in turn, and I invite you to join us for tomorrow, where we'll be going on our next expedition in, inside. So are you all, are you all a group then? Uh, they're all gonna kind of pike up and just kind of nod. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. Yeah. I was just gonna ask if I could switch my detect thoughts before it ran out onto the guy muttering him to himself. Ah. Just to get surface level thoughts he was thinking at the moment while he's muttering. Sure. So he's muttering to himself. <clears throat> oh God! Why am I here? Why am I here? God! Why did I? I I just had to run away. I just had to run away. Why did I have to run away? And now I have to be here. And now I have to be here of all places. Oh my god. Why is my circle bringing me here? Of here. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Having this man seems to be having a panic attack. Um He kind of his thoughts kind of train tail back and forth, swaying and waning. No real. Kind of sounds a bit like the Nathan of the group. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brady. I appreciate that. <laughs> how often do you say, "How did you guys get me to this situation?" That is a fair point. How did I get here again? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you blame your circle, aka your circle of friends. <laughs> you know what? Maybe that has some ring of truth into it. God, why are why are we at tailgaters? It's two o'clock in the morning. I'm tired. No, you're not. Tired is merely a 
abstract of your imagination. <laughs> anyway, continue. Bailey's gonna pipe back up again. So, sorry, your names were... Oh, as I mentioned to you, uh, Sir Bailey, my name is Julius. Julius? Sorry, Brady, I'm... Did you, see, you give him his last name? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. Um... Can't say I've heard of you, but it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. That's quite up. And as for as for you, he'll point to the turtle. Toujours. Toujours. Hmm, it's a pleasure to meet me. Slight head, a slight head bow. Pleasure to be making acquaintances with a turtle. Must say it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. As for yourself, he's going to be pointing towards you, Steph. You're just gonna light a cigar. Not gonna respond. All right then. And as for yourself, he's gonna mess. He's gonna gesture to you, Brian. I'm gonna kind of look at Steph. Look back at him. Uh, that one's Kelsier. Kelsier. Or Baldrick. Sorry, did you say you pointed to him and said he? That one's Kelsier. That's Steph. Okay. Great. <laughs> Well, Kelsia, perhaps you'll be more talkative later in the evening. And Baldrick, pleasure to be making your acquaintance. Can, can I insight the way that he said that? Sure. Like, that's just, maybe if you talk to Peter. That's another <laughs> He's a little bit cheesed that Stefan just kind of blew him off. You know, like... Uh, like, you're supposed to be a team here. You have to rely on one another, and I don't even know your name. And you just lit a cigar in my face. Disrespectful. Um. Yeah. <clears throat> He'll say, uh, well, uh, we have some accommodations that we could, uh, give to you. Um, he'll kind of walk into the He'll take a moment, and he's just gonna, like, walk into this building over here. You hear him rummaging around for a moment or two, and a few moments later, he'll actually come out with a copy of the journal of the Archives of Liver Life, to, and he'll give this to all of you guys, as well with a pickaxe. Um, he's gonna say, we have uh, these books in high supply, so take them, they're yours. And for the pickaxe, well, that's if you wish to ha if you wish to join us in our excavate tomorrow, then you'll have to be doing a cut of the work. But fret not, you help us, we help you. We'll help you to take down some of these hogs that you've been looking for. And they're for cosmetics, so I would presume you wish them to be in good condition. Correct. Hmm. All right. Good. Good. Well, uh, take a seat and get comfortable. I'm, we'll take I'm off gonna, for the morning. Nathan, I'm mm -hmm. gonna speak into uh, Eamon's head. Okay. And I'm gonna say, do we want their help? Because our essentially, I'm gonna ask, do, do we want their help? Because our goals are not necessarily various, but. It is for a criminal organization. I think this one he can respond to. I prefer to work alone. <laughs> okay, now I'll, I'll speak up to Bailey. Uh, well, good sir. Um, I can I can speak for my friends and, and it's, uh, we can we can appreciate the company uh, for this time. It's always fun to share stories. But we do wish about our business alone, and that is no no gripe to you and your people. But it's more a matter of fact that uh, we've built this level of trust with each other. And while I don't, I'm not going to insinuate that I cannot trust you. We're just not quite there yet. So <laughs> there yet, yeah, he he bikes back up. Uh, Hans will actually make. Uh, we'll sp we'll speak up. <laughs> yeah. Well, good luck dying. Trust me, I've lost lots of friends going inside of Liver. 
last thing you want to do is be going inside alone. Especially if you're not well accustomed to its environment. Barely here has been doing this for 13 years. He's seen all of them. I recommend taking some wisdom from the old man. I most mean, certainly will. I mean, appreciate the, the guidebook. Perhaps, perhaps our relationship can change over the evening as we share some drinks and share some stories. But uh, for the time being, this is merely just a pit stop. Hmm. So Bailey's not gonna like that very much. You kind of see him on. You, you see, look on his face alter slightly, and he goes, "Again, we do things in a very specific manner. Manner going into the liver. We do them because we have lost a great many of lives. Hundreds, thousands of lives have been lost in the liver. I'm not. I." Whatever your means of being here are your own means of being here. Hell, look at Victorian here. He's only doing this for women and money. Victorian's gonna pike up. Fuck yeah, I am! Uh, and he goes, but I can't dissuade you. If that is what you wish, then... Best of luck. But... I would encourage you to join alongside us. It's and I promise is you. The hmm? Is the liver so prosperous that you must come back here? If it is so dangerous that you speak of, why do you come back? You it know. is this prosperous, yes. he says. Uh, okay. There is money to be made here, is what you're saying. He's gonna nod. What exactly are you guys after in the liver? <sighs> okay, um... Uh, I forget his name. Uh, Sariel's gonna speak up, the Dragonborn. He's gonna say, well, the liver, as you know, in our bodies, filters toxins. In the Titan, we believe it was the same way. When the Titan was alive, it filtered, its liver filtered out toxins in its environment, um, from its environment, uh, and it collected in the liver. When it died, those toxins had nowhere, left, nowhere else to go. These heavy ma heavy metals condensed based on weight. They spawn rather frequently within the liver. Gold, silver, iron, copper, platinum. These resources, along with some of the herbs and vegetations that you'll will encounter along the way, are wildly lucrative. And for families with nothing and nothing out, no other way to gain money, it's a uh, means to an end for us, unfortunately. We gather, we go to the mines of liver, gather resources, and hopefully make it back alive to see our families tomorrow. Is it so worth it to risk your lives just for some You must be done. Uh, Han, I mean, Han's gonna speak up back up again, he goes, <laughs> yeah it is. Last time around, I made like $20,000. And that was the low end. The low end, he says. Dollars? I've never heard of this term. <laughs> Gold pieces. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's going to say, yeah, it's going to be gold pieces. He made somewhere in the range of 20, to, I mean, 20 gold pieces, and that's in the low end. Uh, listen, I can't persuade you one way or another. Bailey will speak up again. Your actions are your own, but we're leaving tomorrow at 8 a.m. And whether you're there with us or not, we shall see. When, yeah. when did you make? When did you make camp? Tonight? Hmm. Are, so are we like in a town, or is this a campsite just out of town? This is. Mm, it's 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 kind of a town, but also kind of not. It's a place where people can go to rest for a couple days before going to liver or going home. It's not meant but it's for... it's more everyone kind of sets up camp outside. Pretty much. It's... So it's kind of like a truck stop? Yeah, it's like a truck stop. People can come in, Except rest. No What's that? Except no trucks. Except no trucks, right? 
people can come in, rest up, gather resources, things that they need, go in, and hopefully come out, and they're off to do their own thing. Uh, yeah, they even have some ties to local merchants where they sell their resources to. Um, so, like, this is meant... Th these accommodations aren't very comfortable, and they've sustained a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, given that it's roughly six o'clock in the evening, mm -hmm. and you're waiting out for some night, I, I take it in this very You don't go into the liver at night. Not as long as you wish to live. We rest, for in the morning, the nocturnal predators go back in, go back to where they came from and rest. It's the safest time, and we have visibility. We can see what's coming. If you wish to die, you'll see. You'll you'll set out now. Well, I think I can. I think. I can. We are caught out in liver at night. Mm -hmm. If we're caught out in oh. liver, what should we do? Along our route, there are 15 different shelters. Uh, and if we're fortunate enough, um, should we be in the mines later than nightfall? We'll stay within. We'll stay within the mines until the next day. Stay within shelter. Stay within reason. Stay within safety. You don't want the mo the least amount of exposure you can to the outside during night. The better. But that can all wait. Here, why don't you join us for dinner? Uh, and as you can, like, so you can actually see by looking at the campfire that they've set up like steaks. They've set up. Potatoes, carrots. They're preparing a feast. Um, and it definitely looks like they could spare some food for you guys. Um, the rest of the guys kind of take up their, their positions, beginning to eat, taking turns to just have... pour themselves some whiskey and some mead from barrels off to the side. Um, and they invite you for some food as well. Kind of look at my family and like what do you say? Yeah, I would definitely join for some food. Alright. I'll walk up to the fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're not gonna stop you, so there's a uh, a big roast of what what you think is a pig roasting over the fire. Uh you take off uh, there's a knife nearby, so you take off some slivers. Uh, you, they give you a plate and a, uh, a mug to fill up with some mead. And some... Each one of you will take your turn gathering some food, some potatoes, carrots, and <clears throat> taking your seat around some of the log-based benches that they've built around this campfire. Um, hang on one sec. Okay. So, uh, after you guys have gotten all your food and gotten yourselves set up and ready to eat, he'll, uh, Bailey will pipe back up and just say, So, I hope you don't mind, but we have a bit of a tradition here. Before each dive into the liver, we pay respects to those who we do this for, and for those we lost away th along the way. Do not forget them, for they will guide you, and I encourage you to engage. I will begin. For my daughters, Alyssa, Adeline, and Carolina. He pours some of his drink out. Remember your father, and know he loves you. Then he'll take a big swig of his drink. And for Daniel, Arthur, Nigel, and Jahil. My friends, rest well. Lorian will clear his throat and speak up next. For my parents, Zachary and Carden. 
He pours out his drink. I'll keep you alive, even if that means I don't come back. I owe you my life. He takes a swig of his drink. And for Azeal, Tim, Holton, and Kegel, I won't forget your names. Sorry, I will speak next. He pours out some of his drink. For those we help, he takes a swig. For my father, Ronan, and for my mother I've never met. I hope I've made you proud. Victorin will speak up next. For full bellies and lots of bitches! He, pour, he laughs and pours out some of his drink. And for drinks, he takes a swig. <laughs> Hans will kind of look at him and shake his head. Uh, for a new home, he says. He pours out some of his drink. And for the home I left behind. And for my parents. I miss you. He takes a swig. Pal Chapokurka speaks up next. He kind of comes up to the fire. For my druidic circle. Please take me back. He pours out some of his drink. Here's to not dying tomorrow. He takes a small sip and coughs violently. Uh, Logan Valvi will speak next. For the songs we sing tomorrow, he'll take a swig instead of pouring. Do you guys wish to say or do anything? Yeah, I'll speak up. I'll, I'll kind of stand up from the To my mother, who I lost a long time ago, to those who were lost or stolen or have been prematurely been put into this titan's body, and then I'll just slowly tip, tip my tankard and just watch as the movies dribbles. Alright. And then I'll take it. Nice. Alright. Alright, I'll stand up next. Mm-hmm. For my father. For my land, and for the lives that we've lost, okay. pour it out and sit down. All right, Brian, Steph, I'll go next. Okay, for the life we should have lived, and for the revenge of tomorrow, and I'll pour a little bit. All right, and Steph. Thank you. Uh, Bailey's gonna thank you guys. Thank you. Listen. I... I could... I could try to dissuade you from entering, but I know you... Believe your mission, Justin. I won't fight you on that. But just respect is all I ask for. I don't care what you do this for. I don't care what your mission is. But respect the craft. Respect what we do. Because we have a reason for doing it. And he'll just kind of fall silent. Everyone will just kind of be silent for a moment, just eating their food and taking drinks. Does anyone want to say anything, do anything, ask anything? How about them 49ers, eh? <laughs> are you are you serious about that or? No, because that's not about not about the 49ers, but local sports team or whatever. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll I'll say I'll speak up and I'll. I'll say, sir, you've been doing this for 13 years. Mm -hmm. Clearly, you must have some good fortune, or perhaps just a really good head of your I believe it's the latter, my friends. Mm. That's why I've been assigned team lead. I've seen enough, learned enough from those who came before me, acted quickly, and frankly, I was lucky. Not so many of my friends were... Many of my friends were not so lucky. So do you just do this for their honor, or are you... <sighs> my mother is ailing. And raising three daughters is financially taxing. It's been a difficult time for all of us, and... 
My wife, she can't work. She, uh, she's paralyzed from the waist down. I need to feed them all. I need to give them more. The more money I gather, the more resources I collect, the more I get for them, the more they have a chance to live, even if I don't. Sounds like a cleric, isn't she? <laughs> We've been searching for a cleric, but not many people are particularly willing to take on the risks, even if the gains are worth it. Uh, he's going to seem kind of emotional. You know, I've seen a lot of people like you come in. A lot of people who think they know better. And I'd hate to see anything bad happen to you. You don't even know me. I need not know your story to have sympathy and empathy towards you. I need not know your story to care about your well-being. I need not know who you are to care about your tomorrow. But I do. Call it the father in me. She said you have daughters. How old are they? <laughs> Give me one second. Sorry. So, Alyssa is 8 years old, Adeline is 12, and Carolina is 4. His mother, probably within her 80s, she's up there in age, and her mother can't work. His wife can't work, so. Um, this is why I do the things that I do. They can't work themselves, and I can't ask my wife to work. And my mother, well, every day she forgets a little bit more. She forgets. With the, hmm? with the way your uh, partner talks, sounds like you guys make lots of money. Thirteen years, surely you must be better off than to have to be doing this regularly. Oh, I am, but. And if I'm being honest with you, I think this one may be my last trip. I think with this last mission, I should be set. But I'll be damned and say my heart isn't in it for the boys. For Erda. for the men here and the men we lost. I respect them, I love them, and they're like a family to me. With this last mission, I'm giving the reins to Sario. No, to Lorian, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's Lorian. And he will be the new team lead. After that, I will go home and live a beautiful life with my wife and my kids. At least, if the gods see it in my feet. I I don't. I was going to say, who's sitting beside me right now? Ah, uh, so you are... where are you? Uh, oh, okay. I mean, of the party, who would have sat beside me? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, if we want to... do we want to have it where you guys are where you are now, or do we want to post RP where you guys are sitting? I don't know, I can't uh, access it right now. But you can't access it? Why not? I don't have a computer uh, with me. If I can talk. Oh, okay. Well, I'm also streaming on Twitch, so you can look at it through there if you want. Okay, I'll pull it up here in just one second. Sure. I can't, um, the issue is I can't seem to mute. I tried to earlier, and I couldn't mute you on Twitch. Really? So I was hearing double of you. Like, I couldn't mute my Twitch on my phone, you know? Yeah. Oh. That is odd. Can you mute Discord? I could, but then I can't hear anyone else. Fair just point. Mute. Oh, right, yeah. Wait, you can't hear anyone else. Can you not hear them no. when they're talking? Or I would just mute. Just mute Nathan. You, I guess. Hmm. Interesting. Point, yeah. Okay. Wait, do you not hear... When I'm streaming, do you guys hear your other voices? The other people here? No. Hmm. 
I don't know. I don't have it open. I'm going to have to look back at that, because now you got me worried, Brady. Anyways, not the point. Can, you, can I hear myself? Hmm? I can hear you. Oh, I can hear myself. That's okay. That's annoying. Can you not mute Twitch now? Uh, no. Very odd. Hmm. Yeah, very. I don't know who Elsa Sam's is. Sorry. You know Someone's who? typing in the Discord. Anyway, uh, probably not the Discord though. Oh, hey. On the phone. Neat. I didn't realize we had a person with us. Cool. All right. Well, either way. Um. Thanks, Nathan. Thanks for telling me that. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Happy to. So, Brant, uh, Brian, to go back to your question, we're gonna say that maybe you're sitting beside Brant's character, Julius, and. Okay. Well, regardless, it was just going to be a stupid joke. I was just going to leave it over to uh, whoever was sitting beside me, so Julius, and just whisper, we've seen enough plays to know that he's not making it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm to look back, look at, look back at the um, whole thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll give him, like, a little bit of, like, you know when you're really disappointed, but you can't help but smirk a little bit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll give him one of those, but I'm going to, I am going to reflect a little bit. Mm hmm Insane. And, and I'm gonna speak up and I'm gonna s I'm gonna speak fairly. And I'm gonna say I I'm gonna be quiet, but like I'm gonna make like a not like a grunt, but like a noise to make it like I'm about to say something, but I'm I'm be I'm holding I'm being careful with my words or like I'm thinking before I'm gonna speak. Mm hmm And then I wanna look at Bailey. I'm gonna look him dead in the eyes. And I'm gonna say, based on everything that you have said to me and my friends this evening, I probably shouldn't do this. And I, I reach into my bag <sighs> to pull out my... I have one potion of mm. greater healing. Okay. I'm gonna give it to him. Wow. And I'm gonna say you are you are gonna make a point to He's gonna grab it and he's gonna be like Lakes. He's gonna look at you, kind of tears beginning to well in his eyes. I appreciate that. And here's hoping the tides of fate are with us this evening. If you do cho choose to join us, I will give you my best. I will give you all of me, and I will do what I uh, what I can to make sure you return home safe tomorrow. Thank you. All right. Um. Yeah. Is there anything else anybody asks wants to ask the rest of the party? Anybody want to ask any questions to Chubbo? Any questions to uh, the Rogue? Uh, to Vic? Um, to Victorian? The anyone? No, I just like to observe. You're just gonna observe. Yeah, it's like observing people. <laughs> Alright. So, as the night kind of begins to progress a little bit, people begin emptying out the mead barrel, having a bit more drinks, having a bit more fun. Though, people, you could sense that people would like to have music. There is no music being played. But, they begin to relish you in stories of previous encounters within the Liva. Times of great... Uh, times of great um, success and great uh, what's the word Su successes and great stories telling uh, the tellings of the fight and the fe the fighting of these fiends these liver creatures they tell stories of having punched one right in the face and ar um, arriving success uh, arriving alive They've told, they tell stories of the riches that they brought home. People begin to kind of lighten up a little bit and 
kind of let their guards down, kind of just engage with one another. In the corner, you do see the bard, Logan Valvi, scribbling to himself on a note, uh, on a journal. He seems to be kind of just observing, watching. Um, every time anything seems to happen or anyone seems to say anything, he writes it down. He seems attentive, albeit distant. Uh, the tiefling, uh, Chabokurka, or Pell, um, kind of seems a bit inebriated. He seems to have a, a bit more than he, he was able to tolerate himself able to laugh and cheer and it seems his worries have all but disappeared and they begin kind of sharing stories with one another and yeah um I don't know how people are feeling but if we want to say anything ask anything we could do so or we can take a long rest and take it uh, take it up in the morning I think before we do any kind of long rest or anything, I would probably sit down and kind of decide. Mm hmm. Talk to like us. Sure. Are we, are we traveling with them? Or do we even want to stay the whole night? Do we want to go and see them? Like, what's the what purpose? Like, the way I see it, first, there is no traveling with them, especially if we're going to see the same direction. But I also. We have our own quest. We, we owe them nothing. They owe us nothing. But it does sound like it is dangerous here, so... I'm open to whatever. I think the way they've brought us in, I see no need for us to go off without them as... At the end of the day, they're just in it for the money, so it's not like we have any better or worse intentions behind it, behind what we're doing. So I see no reason for us to, uh, like, like, why risk more than we must? This is already a place of what seems to be high danger. I don't see a reason for us to not travel alongside these people. So right. travel with them, but then separate once we uh, find the hogs? Yeah, like if we find what we're looking for and are happy, we can separate, or we could go on a bit of an expedition with them and share in the riches. We can see how it's going and see how much longer they plan on being out once we find what we need. And if it's long, longer than we desire to be out, then we will, we can head back. But if our timelines semi match up, why, why not take this, take advantage of this opportunity to uh, earn us some more financial positives? We'll never say no to gold. <laughs> I, I like, I like gold. Gold is good. Stefan? Uh, I don't care. <laughs> you don't care? Well, I prefer to be alone, but... Yeah, I'm here with you guys. <laughs> How very kind. Um, I would like to do one thing if we're done talking. Shoot! I want to, uh, like, scope out, like, the edge of the, the camp. The edge of the camp? Mm -hmm. Like, which edge are we talking? The edge of the camp? That's a little weird. <laughs> 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 so, like, are you talking, like, the edge going into the liver? Or are you talking... Yeah, just to see what's, like, outside of, like, this little village. Just to see, like, is there anything in the, the trees that are close by? Or just see what's out there. Alright, so Steph, as you can see on the left hand side of this, right hand side of the screen, there's a track of mine carts that travels deep into what you can presume to be the liver. Basically, <clears throat> as you're kind of looking down, you actually see 
there is a very distinct gap between where the trees are and where the minecart is. Moreover, the actual sides of the minecart, there has been sand laid down on either side of the tracks. The track itself seems to be very well lubricated, as if greased up. Um, in the far off distance, you can swear you can make up distant cries of animals, hunts. You can hear croaks of frogs, and you can hear the gentle flapping of bats flying overhead. Um, you definitely see that these tracks seem to go off for quite a distance, farther than your eye can see during night. Um, Do I recognize any of the tracks or the cries? You want to give me a nature check? It would be with disadvantage, though. Are any of them potentially fae, fiends, or undead? Because I get advantage <laughs> on those ones. Fae, fiend, or undead. Well, give me a nature check first, and you'll see. With disadvantage, right? With disadvantage. Foxes. And? I got a 19 and a 1. Oof! <laughs> Stefan, though the frogs sound familiar, everything else is eerily distant. Eer like, both in terms of distance from you and references of real-life animals that you would know. These cries seem to be fierce, powerful, strong. They are unlike anything you've heard before. They are wild and untamed, but there's just not enough information to go on. You're looking, you're trying to call out to the far off distance and hear what you can hear from species you've never seen before. But one thing does seem abundantly clear. There's a lot of them. Okay. Moreover, um, the other edges of the camp, the ones not, I mean, not near the liver, seem to be pretty densely packed with forests. Um, not a whole bunch of farmland here. It seems like this village was carved out of a small little nook. And that's just about all there is around here. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of people just relaxing, building buildings. It just seems like this village, for as far as the eye can see, is the only sign of human settlement. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll just head back to uh, the door. All right. Sure. Do you wish to tell any of them about what you heard, or? I'm gonna I'm gonna mention the blue on my way by. <laughs> there's a lot of shit out there. And then just curl up a little bit. <laughs> and you know when he says blue, Brad, he means you, right? Yep. Okay, great. All right. Anyone else want to do anything else before we call it a night? Nope, I'm happy to go to bed. Alright. So. Alright. Night, guys. Great session. Alright, good night, Alright, guys. <laughs> Brian? Nope, there's you nothing I have to do. Alright. <clears throat> so, you guys can give yourself a long rest if you have not already. Um. A whole lot of things to anything. <laughs> Sorry? All those, all those spells I casted in. Oh yeah, all of them, right? Just so many. So, so, so many. Alright. So. As you guys begin to try to sleep throughout the night, would things eerily... Um, after the campfire is put out and people begin to set their way towards beds, the cries in the distance seem to become a lot more and more alive as the night progresses, becoming louder, more furious, more untamed, un more unfamiliar. 
Some of you guys will have difficulty sleeping, but I'm not going to give you guys any points of exhaustion or anything. The night, the cries of the night seem distant, but all too close. Whatever sleep you manage to, you guys manage to get is choppy, broken up. I get lots of sleep. Think sounds like that don't scare me. Feywild would have lots of sounds. Sure. Yeah, I'm willing to say so, but there's also no disadvantage I'm granting you guys, right? So, okay. either way. Um. All right. So. Um, the night turns over, and light begins to breach into the accommodations. The beds weren't comfortable, and the buildings were cold and wet, but you all managed to get some sleep. As you guys begin to wake up and kind of gather all your... Um, gather all together. Um, before I launch into another speech, is there anything I, else? I saw that. I saw that name. <laughs> but you see the, uh, you see the, the paper? I can see your notes. What? I thought I was doing just the, uh... I can read your whole notes right now. Wow, that's interesting. I really thought... Make... So you're you're streaming your whole screen right now. Make the um the this so drag this out of your taskbar. Uh, grab the multiverse, and make it its own window, and then stream just the window. Oh yeah, here we go. Make it its own window. Your notes are looking uh, nice and full. Thank you. Is the how's that? Is that better? There, okay, now switch back to your notes just in, like, on your regular just desktop. Okay, I did so. Okay, I can't see your notes anymore. Okay, good. Uh, so I'll ask the question again. Does anyone want to do anything just before you guys wake up? Or just before I launch into a big speech? Nope. Nope. Alright. <clears throat> um... Here we go. Top of the morning and ready for your adventure. The players gather in a small, beat-up town and find the other miners outside and already beginning to discuss a plan of attack. Seeing everyone in, attention, um, in attendance, Bailey will clear his throat and welcome you guys in. Morning, you comers. Hope you slept well. Hope the accommodations weren't too uncomfortable. We were just gathered, talking about our plan going forward. Since you're here now, I'll include you and get your cup back up. He clears the throat. <coughs> Alright. On our journey into the depths, there will be a line of minecart tracks that will lead into the mines. This journey is not safe, but has been made progressively safer by the many who traveled before I mean who traveled the steps before us. Should you wish to join us, and I recommend to stick within 15 meters of the tracks, if you value your life. This our journey today is timed. Move fast and quietly. Should we be, should we be unable to leave before nightfall, we will sleep in the, ni the mines in shifts. Listen to me, and if I die, Lorian is the next team lead. If he dies, Soriel is next up. Using the archives book is easy. Open the book and point the pages to whichever creature you wish to identify and the book will find the entry for you. It will display a hologram of the jot notes of the entry. It's always safer to hide than to engage. If the, ent if the, entry, if the entry is a threat of six or higher, do not engage and seek shelter. There should be 15 shelters along the way. Lastly, the creature you seek travels in herds. They are very similar to common bulls, but with extra strength. Use long distance means to attract them closer to the tracks and we'll help you to engage. We'll point out the appropriate time and location to engage. Listen to your team lead at all times. Are we clear? You guys can ask questions if you want to. Thumbs up. So, so we are to follow you guys? Like we are, we are to... 
do things as you say. Correct. Engagement. Everything here is specialized to a T. Anything else? Any questions? Any? I'll say if you encounter any warthogs, let us know. That's our job. Of course. We'll. Uh, I can't and, promise and we you we'll find any, but we'll do. If we do, we'll help you to engage in the combat. Just ask that you don't lose anything. Of course. It's not the first time we've retrieved pelts of these animals. They're used widely in cosmetics. Strong pelts. Mm -hmm. Good. Versatile. Anyone else? Alright. After about an hour of... Hmm? What did he just say? He said... This isn't the first time we've dealt, we've killed some uh, some of the liver wor warthogs. Their okay. pelts are strong and they're good for pre producing leathers and clothing. So I'm even to the last little bit what you said. Sorry. Oh no, it's okay. Am I good to go now? I'm still yeah. hearing guy. You got you guys doing me good? Hello. Yeah. Yes, we right, can great. hear you. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. After about an hour of final preparations, the adventure into the lever begins. All the miners gather by the minecart, and the silence is deafening. Everyone seems to be on edge as they gather their nerves for the mission. It doesn't take long before all the equipment is put into the minecart, and the mission is cleared to go. Bailey takes the lead and begins to push the minecart. Um, at this time, you guys can switch over to the other map if you want. Go to the minecarts. It should be a portal. Uh, I'm just following. Uh, Nathan, you gotta bring me. Right. I gotta. Oh. Oh no. What's oh no? Oh, we guys are on the opposite side of where you should be. It's funny because <laughs> I've literally tested this. Oh, there. Okay. Oh, I see what happened here. Okay. I'm going to keep reading. Uh, okay. <coughs> it doesn't take... Okay. Bailey takes the lead, pushing the minecart. Um, begins, be, begins to push the minecart. Lorian walks just in front of the minecart, applying grease to the tracks as Bailey pushes. The grounds around... Um, I guess I... Uh I offer to push the cart for him. He'll say yeah. Uh, he's like, okay, by all means. I'll uh, take up station in front. If I will signal to you if, you, if I see anything. Okay. I'm uh, a strapping young lad with high why. strength. So. Do I have high strength? You do have high strength. I just don't know what your strength modifier is because you never told me. That's okay. Yes, I did. Did I not? Uh, no. Oh, you did. Right. I just didn't. Right. Never mind. Doesn't matter. 18. Nice. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So having Brady take the lead of the mine, pushing the mine cart. Um, Brady, you just got to be mindful that you're not running over Sariel as he lubricates the tracks. But beyond that. I will. Find, I. Uh, so I. I'd like to think that I walked for a few moments mm -hmm. before offering to kind of gauge the speed. Sure. Uh, do you have some dice with you, Brady? Like I didn't. Uh, I have D and D Beyond, so I can roll just a D twenty if you like. Yeah, sure. Can you roll me performance? Not performance. Uh, just roll me a strength, and I'll give you it with advantage because you watched the speed of which they go. Thank God you gave me advantage. We're not gonna <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> Oh, never mind. Never mind. What happened? So I rolled a two, <laughs> and then I rolled a one. Oof. So six is my highest number. Yeesh. Okay. Uh. So um, Lorian is gonna take. Uh, yeah. You're basically gonna really like. You're expecting this minecart to be way heavier than it was, and you accidentally reef on it, and start and. Uh, Lorian will just be like, hey, hey, watch it. I'm literally right in front of the tracks, dude. Sorry. I. It looked heavy. It's alright. It's alright. <laughs> you should take off one of his fingers. 
No, he didn't take off his finger, but you nearly hit him. You very nearly hit him. It was a two. It was a two. If it was a one, I would have made you hit him. But, (laughs) good thing you had advantage, I guess. All right. Wait a second. If I hired you, we're supposed to get advantage on strength checks. Do I get double advantage? Why do you get double advantage? Because I I have advantage on strength checks. I don't think they stack. Damn it. Yeah. Sorry, bud. All right. You sure? You sure? Because it was an 18. Mm, okay, wow. Good job. Well, it already happened, so... Oh, well. <laughs> Alright. The grounds around the track are... Imme- um, uh, uh, the grounds immediately around the track appear to be manually placed sand. You walk for about ten minutes before the environment around you begins to change. The trees seem discolored, and the air grows in humidity, and the smell of rot, and something awful begins to pierce your nose. Soon the grounds around the track seem to change too, becoming an off-color green, an off-green color that seems unique to this landscape. The sounds of distant, unnerving animal cries are heard in the far distant. Soon, even the water begins to change. The water in this area seems different from how you're used to. Almost gelatinous in nature. It looks thick. It flows slowly. It doesn't take long for you guys to notice your first animal on the horizon. This creature looks to be about three feet in height, has six legs and an extendable mouth that drinks from the water. This creature doesn't have eyes but does appear in a fat the creature has many rolls along the length of its body, and these rolls seem prominent around the joints. It doesn't seem to acknowledge your passing. Anyone want to ask any questions thus far? Got it. In the... You want to? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do that. All right. So, Brant, you, um. You open the book and point it towards this creature. The pem- the pages f- flip I mean, flip themselves, going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And after a moment, a hologram pops up in front of you. And you see the following. Bile Slurper. Class 2. Um, and uh, it gives you a little bit of a uh, description. It's this sea bear looking creature is relatively harmless um, so long as you don't engage with it. Um, that's all it says. But in the uh, liver guide him, um, book I gave you, so you just want to read up on it, that's the choice. Don't have to. Point is that's correct. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Um, we know. I'll, I'll, I'll look up to you. Mm-hmm. Or anyone that might know. Um, are these things all tied up immediately? No. Bailey's gonna pike up. He says, no, no. These things are actually relatively harmless. You know, uh, you could theoretically go up to a and pet it if you wanted to, but I wouldn't recommend it, mostly because, while well, the water is not technically poisonous, it's so laden with nasty diseases and chemicals that you wouldn't want to be actively touching it. So, you could go up and pet it, but again, not recommend. That's why it looks so gelatinous. Yeah. Exactly that, actually. It's fat because this water... It, it, slur- it slurps up this water that's highly gelatinous in nature. Mm-hmm. Good observation, Brady. Cool. Cool. Any other questions? Are you gonna give- Sometimes I like to say things just to... So that you know that I'm paying attention. <laughs> I appreciate that. Stab, uh, Brett. Nathan, do you want to give Brady inspiration for that? <laughs> not right now, but later. Especially oh. not after a bad admission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just like to say things because he, I, uh, I want to make sure you're listening. 
No, I like to say things so that you know that I'm listening, because I feel like sometimes I don't say things for a really long time, and then you're like, okay, Brady, are you even there? <laughs> you just leave. Nah. I feel that way about Steph sometimes. <laughs> I bet you ten bucks he's probably playing Power World right now. Just ten? I'll take that, actually. I was not playing Power World, but I did miss a port of that. Oh, did you? Hmm. So yeah, you, there's something about some you, water in there. You, you do cut out a bit, once here and there. Oh, really? Yeah, this head, these yeah. headphones are garbage. I need to get new ones. Uh, okay, if I start cutting out again, let me know. I have a backup pair, I just don't want to use it. But, if I need to, I will. I'm going to stop fiddling with that. Um, am I good now? Yeah, like overall you're fine. It's just kind of like randomly in the middle of a sentence. Interesting. Okay, then I'm gonna stop. Uh. Okay. Uh. All right. If nobody has any else, anything else they want to ask, I'm gonna keep going. <clears throat> yep. you, you guys continue your journey. The environment around you becomes more and more foreign as you progress. The air seems hot and tastes different. Odd creatures fly overhead, unlike anything you've seen before. The trees here grow, I mean, look and grow differently to normal trees. Even the ground itself seems to get progressively squishier. You guys spot the, your first tombstone, a hastily made headboard of wood that hangs from a tree. Checkpoint 1. 23 dead from camp to here. Nigel Houston, Graham Patterson, Stephen Pennington, the board continues to list all the names. Shortly after this tree, you guys spot your first shelter, which I didn't put on the map, but it's there. It's an all-metal shack with no windows and a bolt and a locked door. I mean, a, with a, a bolt and locked door. Large claw marks mar the sides of the building, allowing light into the building. You spot Lorian pause. He seems briefly lost in thought before quickly slapping himself awake and continuing his work. A distant cry suddenly jolts you all to attention. The cry pierces your ear with a sudden, furious intensity. SHELTER! NOW! Bailey barks. All of you, all the miners, quickly bolt into the shelter, and they signal you to join. Um, yeah, I guess we're running after them. Okay, I'm gonna quickly make a house. Uh, there we go. Close enough. So, sure enough, everyone goes inside. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Perfect. Just dog pile inside. Yeah, right. And okay. my tail. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Um, silence, Bailey whispers as he bolts and locks the door. To the, I mean, I mean, to the shelter. Uh, as he bolts the door to the shelter closed, another loud screech <laughs> rings from the outside, and the sudden and the roof suddenly begins to creak with a sudden intensity. A series of loud bangings are heard from the back of the, the back wall of the small shelter. It takes a moment, followed periodically by cooing sounds, and the roof uh, suddenly creaks once more, and the sound of flapping wings. Is heard from the outside. The room it, the lies silent for a moment. After about ten minutes, Bailey speaks up. It seems to have left. I'll take a look. Follow me. Ah, uh, only. I mean, follow me only when I clear you two. He signals. I me. I would like to peer out as he opens the door to leave. Uh, sure. Give me an investigation with disadvantage because it's small cracks and small sliver arm, you know, small claw marks. Invest investigation yeah, with disadvantage? Correct. Fuck! What? I got a natural 20, <laughs> but I also got a 10. No! <laughs> so... Given the small cracks of um, the slivers that you see, you're trying to like move around, but you're only getting a very small POV of the environment around you. 
nothing of what was on the roof or really anything in the environment to really gauge anything at all. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Bailey will signal to Lorian and he unlocks the door and walks through. And Lorian locks the door behind him. You hear him cautiously take footsteps around the shelter and around the perimeter of the building. After a few minutes, he knocks on the door, signaling it's safe to exit. You all... So, uh... Lorian, sure enough, unlocks the door and opens it up and everyone quickly goes outside. You all quickly move to the minecart and begin again as if nothing ever happened. But clearly, Pell is shaken from this encounter and he twitches with anxiety. I'm just going to take a moment and... Sure. Yeah. Back. sure. Now I'm just going to take a moment and get everyone back. I'm going to move the client card up. Okay. Great. So Pal's in the back, and Brady's pushing the minecart. All right, everyone's back in line. Uh, I don't know if I should keep going with Brant, but gone. Now I'll just keep going. Okay. So, after a small while, Bailey suddenly stops the car. I I guess sig suddenly signals you to stop, Brady, and signals to look um, to Lorian. He looks up to you. Um, up to you guys as well. Well, boys, it's your lucky day. Your hogs are just on the horizon. We'll help you fight them. They'll attack all us all, all us at, and they'll attack us all at once. So, be ready. I recommend getting the jump on them and trying to dispatch them as quickly as possible. The sounds could attract something else. And sure enough, uh, sure enough, you guys see seven liver wart hogs in the distance. They seem to be eating some tall grasses, having not seen you. These boars seem to have um, seem to be green with an extra set of tusks. They seem stronger than wild hogs and work in perfect synchronization with one another. And I will encourage you guys to look up in the map if you have not already, and you will surely see the hogs. I see one. You do see one. Mage armor. All right. I'd like um. To You'd like to what? Sorry. I would like to go invisible, please. Sure. Oh wait, are you telling that to Julius? No, no. I'm I'm rolling for stealth. Oh, you're rolling. I see. Uh, sure. Can we roll to stealth? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. All right. Yeah. Guys, I just realized I don't have anything not sharp. Oh, no. <laughs> Use your fists. <laughs> don't you have a mace or something? I have a flail. That's sharp. Yeah. I have javelin, and I have a crossbow. So what matters is the overall quality, right? Like, they ha obviously, you have to dispatch this in one way, right? I if, suppose if I, if I were to shoot them with a crossbow bolt, mm -hmm. we could use that as a point of cutting. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Not to mention, like, as long as it's not too damaged where they can't unreasonably repair it, right? Like, don't go smashing away with it at a sword, but, I mean, one or two arrow holes... Or a flail holes, as well. What's that? Or a flail, yeah. But one or two <laughs> arrow holes, they're not going to complain too, too much. I mean, I, I can... have a poisonous dagger. You have a poisonous dagger. That's handy. That, I'm sure poison some. Well, maybe maybe um, they get poisoned. Maybe they get poisoned. Maybe. maybe. Um, I, I have a scroll. I'd like to ready my crossbow. Sure. I, I will say, I do have a scroll of bone. A uh, scroll of... Okay. Bludgeoning. Neat. Mm -hmm. I can cast web. 40 feet of it. Okay, that's not bad. 
I also have. I made sure to prep color spray for this. <laughs> Wait, remind me what color spray does? Um, a dazzling array of flashing colored lights uh, hmm. springs from your hand. Roll six d ten. Total of how many hit points? Or it's the total of how many hit points of creatures this spell can affect. Creatures in the fifteen foot cone originating from you. Uh are affected in ascending order of their current hit points. Hmm. Starting with the creature that is the lowest current hit points, each creature affected by the spell is blinded until the end of my next turn. Oh, neat. That's handy. Brady, how much damage do you do with your unarmed strength? Five. Why don't we give Brady some Titan's blood so we can Hmm. Probably a good idea. Um, does the Titan's Blood, it only lasts for, what, one round? One round. Oh, one round. Yeah, I'm gonna say one round. One action. Ew. Ew. Okay. I have I have my crossbow. My crossbow does good damage. Yeah, I know, it just, like, here's your slash. We're just risking it. Going. Yeah. But there's seven of them. Like, we, we, we're bound to... We're not gonna damage all the pelts. Right? Yeah. Like, we need to eliminate a couple. Because they will hurt as a pack. So even if we eliminate a couple and then receive the pelt, collect the pelts from a few, it'll... Like, yeah. Nathan, I think... do, I, do I think lightning damage would... Do you think lightning damage would... Sorry? Do I think lightning damage would damage the pelts? It's likely. Uh, like how being struck with lightning, you're kind of searing and burning your skin. It's likely that you're going to cause some kind of damage to the pelt. I can do 1d6 plus 5 unarmed striking. Okay. That's pretty good. I could cast web. We draw them over, they get stuck, and then I just punch them to death. <laughs> That's true. That's pretty true. I can, blind. I can use I one can... crossbow bolt to get them to come at us. Yeah. I mean, if you blind them, that would technically be a sneak attack on top of that, right? So there's another d6. Yeah. And then Crimson right, that's another and d4. If they're blinded, I feel like we have advantage on the attacks. You do get advantage. Well, no, they get a disadvantage on attacks, right? Okay. If, they're st if they're stuck... Then you have advantage on attacks, right? So, which in a in the web they would be. Yes. Precisely. Hey, Nathan. Yeah. The what we see on the map is how they're formed right now. Yes. Okay. What is is this accurate? Say it again, sorry. I'm just wondering. Distance wise, I think he's trying okay. to figure oh. out. Are these. Sorry, hold on. If you look at the map, are these four, the top four? Mm hmm. If I. I'm gonna say the map this, is accurate. Okay. So this is all within five feet? If that's what the compass says, I'm gonna say yeah, because it just makes everything. It makes our lives a lot easier. I'm, I'm, it's really hard to tell. Just because it's. it's right. I'll see within. I'll say they're within. Yeah, five feet. Okay, so these four pointing it's based on the origin. It's mm -hmm. all five, right? Yeah. Okay, and then that's five feet. That's five feet. Yeah. Okay. Um, I got a really good idea, Brian. I just need a little bit of tightening. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's try it. I think I, I know what you're doing. It's not what you think I'm doing, but okay. on those lines. So, Nathan, I can use Titan Blood for a spell, correct? Yes, you can. If it's a number, you can double it. Okay, yes. So, uh, I'm going to look at my friends and I'll say, I got an idea. So, <laughs> I a spell called Snilix Snowball Swarm. Okay. It does a five-foot radius. Okay. 
And I'm also going to use um, some sorcery points to twin spell it. Alright. Um, so if I use three sorcery points, wait, hold on. Then equal to spells level. So two sorcery points, second level spell. And I'm going to Titan Blood it. it it's, it'll do 6d6 of damage. Okay. On a fail. So Nathan. Yes? I need all of these hogs to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, okie dokie? Okay. Yeah. 15. 15. Okay. All right, well, let's start by getting us some combat music. Vibes. Music. Combat. I was... Uh, Brian, I think you know I was asking about lightning, right? Yeah. It's just, it's just too busy. I, I think... Just... I think that'll work. All right, so you said what kind of roll was it, sorry? Dexterity saving throws of uh, 15. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go Um. I did not calculate. Hmm. Damn. Okay. Well, let's see what we can do. Okay. Um. The first one actually rolls a nat 20. Uh, second one, uh, rolls a 4, so he fails. Uh, the third one rolls a four. Wait, no, wait. Uh, I think that was just his. That was 18. So that one, a third hog succeeds. Uh. I'm sure I suck, because I don't care. Um, then the next one rolls an 11. So he fails. Next one rolls a 19. So he fails. Then a four... Sorry. Hog 5 succeeds. Uh, hog four, um, 6 uh, fails. And a nat 1. So the next hog uh, critically fails. Okay. So, Nathan. Those who fail take 19 points of cold. 19 points of cold damage? Wow. Oh, sorry. No, that is double. Did you Titan's Blood it? Yes. Okay. So this is boar number one. Boar number one succeeded. This is boar number two. I'm going to rename them. I cannot see which ones. <coughs> you may have to hover over to be able to see what he's doing. Hello, Nathan? Yeah. Rename. Nope. Okay. Description three. Four three. Edit description. Four, this is four. very funny. What's what you do to attempt to do this? It's very taxing, isn't it? <laughs> it's pretty funny watching you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. That was close, one. So, I want an effect. Nope. Ah! Uh, don't tell me what to do. Wow, that's really a piss take. <laughs> that's what she said. Okay, close enough. Okay! Um... So, Boar 1 succeeded, so he takes how much pretty how much damage? If they succeed, they take 9. 9? Okay. If they fail, they take 9. Okay. So, he, Boar number 2 failed, so he took 19. Boar number 3 took, uh, succeeded, so he took, takes 9. Bailed, I mean, Hog 4 failed, so he takes 19. Hog 5 succeeds, so he takes 9. Hog 6 failed, so he takes 19. 
And he crit failed, so you want to do double damage, which is going to be 38. Sure. All right. So you instantly kill uh, this hog here. Um, so you used Titan's blood for this, right? Yes, he did. Okay. So, Brady and Brant, um, empowered by the Titan's blood, you feel you dab a single drop of it on your hand and suddenly your entire body feels coursing more powerful than ever. This magic is overwhelming. With a single drop, you are, uh, you feel so empowered, so strong, you channel that energy, you cast um, this ice magic, and some of these boars are absolutely um, floored by this. Um, one of them even immediately dies, encapsulated in a block of ice. The rest of them, um, some of them fail, some of them succeed, but the, 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 the spell seems stronger than you've ever casted it before. It's breathtaking how much power is behind this. Seizing, seeing the opportunity that this, um, they've just been attacked, the boars begin to rush towards you. I'm going to do, we're going to do a combat now. Um, but I want to try it in a slightly different way, if that's okay with you guys. What I was thinking for this combat session is we'll roll initiative, but you'll all attack at the same time. That way you can kind of bob and weave your abilities. Your, um, your attacks, your actions, right? So okay. it'll go in order of initiative, but it's going to, uh, it's all going to happen at the same time. So if you see, oh, Brant's going to do that. Okay, well, I'm going to change up how I'm doing this. Does that make sense? Yep. Uh, virtually, but it's. I'm trying to just break it down to just two turns. Well, yeah, it's a good point. Um, so then what if my initiative I was trying to take account, you know what, okay, so I heard this online where they just said, I give the players one turn and the enemy one turn, right? So, but I wanted to try and give you guys, because I know you probably, you guys probably built initiative or something. So I was like, okay, well, let's try it with initiative, but... So were you thinking, basically, we would do a joint initiative roll, all of us versus all the boars, divided by the numbers, and then whatever, whoever had the higher number, they'd go first? Well, I was thinking it would go, like, turn based on who got the higher initiative, and then you guys could do that, but I'm, that's a good point, Bramp. So let's just say you guys all do your turns at the same time, and then we'll go with the enemy's turn. Right? So player's going to go, and then the... Gonna go and then the board's gonna go, or players and NPCs? Players and NPCs, boars. Got it. Yeah. So I want you guys to consider what you're gonna do for your actions. Okay. That includes movement, that includes what you're gonna do, bonus actions. Okay, okay. well, mine's fairly easy. Okay. Um, hold on. So they're going to start to rush you, but they're not going to get very far. We'll say you guys have surprise. Um, so they're going to not. Make it too far. Okay. So we're still trying not Perfect. to them, right? You're trying to damage them as least as possible, correct? Okay. I'm just gonna move up about here. Mm -hmm. That's not going in a straight line, but okay. And then second level color spray to blind as many of them as I can. Okay. Um, and they have to make what kind of saves? Uh, nothing. I roll eight d ten. Okay. What is that? 47. So basically, um, it goes from whoever's hurt, like whoever has the lower amount, mm -hmm. 
Uh, and then you basically you take their HP off of that 47 until I run out kind of thing like that, and everyone wow. that was included in that is blinded. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool. So then go ahead and roll your die. Uh, 47. Oh, it's 47. So I have to divide them up by the hogs, right? Well, sort of. Again, you have to start with the, those, the hogs that have the least amount of health first. Okay. Uh, it would be hog 2, 4, and 6. Um, so, uh, how much are you doing per, uh, oh, so, um, okay, so they have so all of those, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So let's say hogs two, four, and six, I, I don't know what it is, okay? Mm -hmm. Say hogs two, four, and six, they all have ten health, as an example. Kay. Okay. Those three get colored spread. Mm -hmm. Say the next four has twenty health, well, thirty plus twenty is fifty, that's, 50 is greater than his 47, so then it stops at that point. I see. Okay. In which case, um, so, you're gonna, um, going from the most damage hog to the next, least. oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, most damage, most damage yeah. to the, um, to the least, you actually managed to take out hogs two and four, but hog six is still standing. Okay, so hog two and four are blinded, so they can yeah, they'll have a disadvantage on the attacks. So wait, they are, but this is damage, right? So they're taking. No, this isn't damage. This is blinding them. Mmm. Okay. 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 I see. Then, oh, I get it. Okay, I get it. My bad. Um. So he's blinded. Um. So yeah, they're blinded until the end of my next turn. Okay, sounds good to me. I will assign those uh, those blinds, um, and then uh, we'll go up to the next person. So, are we rolling initiative? I'm no, just you can just go. Uh, but everybody kind of goes at the same time. Yeah, everyone goes at the same time. I'll let you guys All go right. first before the NPCs. All right, uh, I guess I'll jump in quickly. I'll uh, bonus action. Shield of Faith, um, one of the, uh, wh whichever NPC looks like they're most likely to go towards the battle first. Okay. Or get the deepest in. Yeah, it's likely Bailey yeah. will hop in first. Alright, I'll, uh, Shield of Faith on Bailey. Okay. And right. then I will use my crossbow, which I have, um, that I've already pulled out, and I will fire... Mm -hmm. at the one that did not get or no, all of them got affected by the cold, right? They all got affected by the cold but some of them more than others. Two, four, and six uh, the, are the most damaged. Okay, um, what are the t the one that, right in the middle of the two blind ones. Uh-huh. Four, three? Is that four, three? Yeah, okay, four, three. I would like to fire my crossbow. God, this is this was supposed to be combat. There's music. an 18. <laughs> Sorry, you were cutting out ridiculous, so. I think it was does an 18 hit. Yeah. Does an 18 hit? An 18 does hit. Yeah. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to cut out. No, it's all. I was moving around. You good? Okay. Yeah. So you, you roll an 18. Can you roll me damage? And what type of damage are you using? Uh, it is a 7 okay. of piercing. A 7 of piercing. Okay, and where are you aiming this shot? At the... The... I would guess, like, sort of like the chin. Okay. The chin... Okay, so you're or uh, you're, between uh yeah yeah the chin. All right, so you uh so sure enough you managed to make contact with the ho with the hog. Uh, can you roll me damage quick? Seven. Seven. Okay, great. Seven. Sorry, I'm doing like multiple things at once. Okay, um. Very good. Great. So you managed to uh you managed to clip the guy on the hog's chin and it kind of reels back 
it has difficulty opening its jaw now, but uh, it's still standing. Um, Stefan, you haven't moved yet? Okay. I would like to, with just like a roar of rage, start mm -hmm. running at 4-6, and halfway there, I would like to hybrid transform into a half werewolf. Ooh. And then attack 4-6 with my claws. All right. With your claws? Sure. Yeah, but I get to choose to make them bludgeoning damage. Oh, okay. Because it's an unarmored strike, so I can choose between bludgeoning or slashing. Okay, great. Uh, roll to hit. Want to see that and just just say, well, that's new. <laughs> well, that's new. <laughs> 23 hits. Oh, uh, Stefan, I believe you could actually change your, uh... I believe you could actually polymorph. I just don't know how to in this game. Brant, do you remember? If you click on the little arrows at the top right, there's a character studio, a little smiley face. At the very, very top, there's three, two arrows pointing to the left. Tab. Click that. You go to the shapeshift tab. You caught that, Steph? Yeah. Cap. Nice. Okay, great. Jesus, that's big. Okay. All right. So remind me, that was a twenty-three, right? Yep. And you transformed it, the, the damage type into bludgeoning, and you're attacking Hog Six, correct? Hog Six. Great. Okay. Well, and I get sneak attack damage. You do get sneak attack damage. You were in stealth. Okay. So that would be ten damage plus. Hmm. Five, so 15 damage. Alright, so Stefan letting out your inner beast you transform into the werewolf surprising the party for the first time. You charge towards this boar, this boar um, completely startling it and you just go one, two smashing the, bo the boar's head clean in uh, with just two furious punches of uh of your fists this boar is dead um and you feel the beast begin to the beast inside you begin to to take control and you feel empowered all right good job that's hog six dead i'm just gonna move you quick stuff so i can delete hog six okay um now we're gonna go up to our uh, our people. So, um, Bailey is gonna take up next, and he's gonna use an unarmored strike against Board Two. He's gonna have advantage. So, that's gonna be a boom boom. He got a nat twenty. All right. So he's what he's gonna do is he's gonna absolutely punch this. Uh, he's gonna unarmored strike this uh, this boar. One second. He's going to do 11 damage onto boar number 2. 11. And he actually manages to punch the boar to death. Um, with one quick punch, he actually snaps the boar's neck. And it falls limp onto the ground. Having no idea where his attack came from. Uh, next up... Um, Lorian is going to start making to where I mean, making his oop, his rounds. Um, where's my ruler here? Here we go. He was here, so he's going to attack uh, boar number five. Boar number five. Um, Lorian. He's also he also has piercing and bludgeoning, so I'm not going to get him to do that, but I will get him to roll an armored strike. He gets a 15. Rolling damage does... If D&D Beyond will work... Oh, here we are. Four bludgeoning damage to hog number... What did I say? Five? Four. Five. Alright. Sariel, the dragonborn, is up next. And he's going to take my ruler and... Do 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 do. Except for not like that. He's also going to attack boar number six. 
a burn number five. He also has primarily piercing, so he's going to roll. Uh, that's a nine. He doesn't hit. Um, that's his turn. I'll move him up quick. And then it's Victor Victorin's turn. He pulls out his rapiers and begins to charge towards one of the two, one of the boars. Um, and he's going to charge towards boar number three. He's going to make contact, and he's going to do. He um he's actually going to do nine piercing damage. Uh, I said what did I say? Board number three. He did nine. So you see, Victorin. He, he he begins laughing as he's charging up. He pulls out his daggers and charges towards the boar, um, not giving a shit about anything. Right? He stabs the boar right in um. Right in one, um, he stabs the boar just behind the shoulder blade uh, and tries to dig his blade in as deep as he can. Um, the boar is still standing, but is damaged. Um, next, uh, Hans Murdoch is going to move. Um, and he is going to... I really wish I had this hmm. Alright, he's going to cast Gust onto the boars, and they have to make a strength saving throw. Uh, he's going to cast it onto boar number five. Um... And it's going to succeed. And the boar is actually going to get pushed back by... Five feet. Um, Sariel's going to have opportunity attack. And he... Misses. Actually, pretty badly, but not the point. Um, and then Logan... He's just going to sit in the back. Just taking notes in his book. Uh, hogs are going to go next. Uh, they are going to... Um, okay, so... Oh, okay, so boar 5 is going to attack the Victorin. Boar 4 is going to try to uh, peer around, but he's completely blinded. Boar 5 is going to attack Sariel, and boar 1 is going to charge... Actually, hang on. Towards, uh, um, Tabernacle, uh, Tejul. Um, so, Sariel's attack is gonna hit, and Sariel's gonna take 8 damage. Brady, he actually got a nat 20, so you're gonna take 10 damage. Uh, and the next one's also not gonna hit. So, Brady, did you get that? I'm going to say yes. Yes, yes, I got that. Okay. Now, it's your turn. It's your guys' turn. The boars can't, I mean, the boars can't do anything else. I'm only just going to go ahead and four. And then punch them in the face. Board number four, the blinded one. All right, roll to hit. Yeah. Twenty. Twenty? Yeah, that's a hit. Actually, you have advantage too, but that's not the point. Um. Nope. Alright, well, I'll see what I'm trying to do. So, <laughs> um, that was six damage. Nice. And do I get sneak attack on this? Uh, considering you're a giant ward, uh, a giant haw, uh, thing, I'm gonna say no. 
Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. Uh, who wants to go next? Grant. New turn, right? Yeah. New turn. Okay. Uh, I will target four five. Cap. Go ahead. Um, and I will do. Yeah, fuck it. I'll do chromatic orb first level, and I will do thunder. Thunder damage. Okay. Do, I mean, did, did it appear that the cold did much damage to the pelts? Actually, no. The the pelts seem relatively unscathed. Alright, then I'll do that. Uh, cold Great. Okay. Eleven does hit, actually. Fantastic. And yeah, that does. Uh, eight. Eight. I will horrible. Two, two, and four. Oh. Okay. Um. Uh, sorry. One second. Um. You gotta leave, Brady. Yeah, I gotta head out here in a minute. Ah, uh, alright. Plans were made without my knowledge, and I gotta get going. You wanna take your final attack first? Yeah, take your final attack first. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Roll to hit. Oh, okay. Um... Can I roll a... Does a 13 hit? 13 does hit. Which board, are you which board are you attacking? The one in front of you? One that... Uh, I'm using a crossbow, so one that will not... That one that I won't get a disadvantage on. Uh, boar 5 or boar 3? Boar 5, sounds good. Okay, go ahead. Oof! Uh, ten damage. Ten damage. You actually managed to kill the boar. Um. Yeah. Where do you want to aim that shot? Uh. In the eyeball. In the eyeball. All right. So, with a fleet, with a feat of acrobatism, you aim your aim your crossbow up and you fire. You actually managed to nail the air, the eyeball of the beast, and it drops dead, um, having its brain pierced. You guys are doing exceptionally well. Um, fun fact, D&D Beyond said that this combat was going to be deadly. I didn't believe it, but it said it was going to be deadly. <laughs> with all um, of our allies? Yeah, with all the allies. Of the two it that is beta. are left, yeah. uh, which one looks, like, which one's more hurt? Uh, so there's boar one and three. Um, boar one and three, uh, boar one is more hurt. Okay, I'm gonna cast Magic Missile first All level. Right. Um. So you said Boar One is more hurt. Correct. Okay, I'll aim two of the bolts at Boar One, mm -hmm. and I'll throw the third one at Boar Three. Okay. Remind me what for, kind of damage type? What damage type is it again? It's Force. Force. Okay. Copy. Yeah. And I could not have rolled better for Boar One. Nice. And um. That's ten damage. Nice. Actually, that's enough to kill it. Nice. And then for boar three, I could not have rolled worse, so that's a two. <laughs> that's a two. Oh, yeah. no! Uh-huh. That's it. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, I see. Actually, wait, no, wait. I think his, I think, I think boar one is still alive. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think I did the mouth wrong. Yeah, boar one is still alive, and hog three is actually a little bit more damaged. Now, now he's a bit more damaged. I went. Uh, okay, so that's your turn, Brian. I'm Brian. Yes. Okay, so that's Brian, Stefan, Brant, and Brady. Um, do you have to go right now, Brady? I can 
listen for another 10 minutes, but I can no longer see the screen. Okay. Sure. Um. Okay. Um. Sure. Um. Words, 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 words. Okay. So, uh, it's gonna be their turn next. Um. Seizing the opportunity, Boily is gonna move forward a little bit more, and he is gonna attack, uh, Boar 1. Uh. With an unarmored strike, uh, he is going to hit and do five damage. Uh, nope. Or one, five. He has, okay. Um, then Lorian is going to attack up next. He's going to help you here and attack for three. He's also going to do an unarmored strike. Uh, he's actually not going to make. Uh, significant contact. He goes to punch the boar, but the hide is too thick and his punch didn't have enough force behind him, so he doesn't make any contact. Sariel is up next, and he's going to do the same thing. Um, Sariel, Sariel, Sariel. He's going to chase up and attack boar one, doing an unarmored strike. Um, having not enough force to actually put behind the thing. Sorry, I mean... Uh, then, Victorian is actually going to stab Boar 3 this time. Doing 18 damage. No, sorry, that's an 18 to hit, and his damage is... Um... 18. Boar 3, 18. Piercing. All right. So with one, um, with another stab into this, uh, to the other boar's side, uh, Victorin actually manages to fell this other boar, and it's dead. Um, then Hans Murdoch is going to cast um, Firebolt, not Firebolt. He's going to cast Gust at it again, um, and the Liverwort Hog passes this time, and that's his turn. And Pell. Has, uh, he's going to cast Cure Wounds on uh, Brady here. He's going to... Brady, you heal for 6 damage. Or 6 health. And Logan is again... He's going to approach a little bit more, but he's still not going to engage in the combat. Alright. It's your guys' turn again. There's only one hog remaining. Who wants the honor? <laughs> Any of your guys is I mean what's Steph has been doing but she, right, so she be fine on that front. Yeah. Go ahead, Steph, you seem to be I will since I'm flanking I'm gonna get the sneak attack, right? Yeah. Well you just get advantage, but yes. I don't think you need it, but you, you just get advantage, but not necessarily. Anyways, can you continue, continue doing your thing? 43 to hit. Yes, that's going to hit. Damage? That's 10 plus sneak attack damage? I can guarantee you it's already dead. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you want to roll <laughs> it, buddy? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. All right, all right. Ten damage. All right. Do you want to paint how you kill uh, this last hog? Um. No, no. You do this one. All right. So coming up from behind uh, the where I mean from this hog, Steph, you basically just curl up your fist, smash um, the hog's spine from the back. The creature instantly keels over, uh, having its spinal cord severed, and it dies. Congratulations, guys. So you have successfully killed uh, seven of the boars. Uh, two of them have received piercing damage. Actually, I lied. It looks like uh, Buddy Boy, Victor, Victor, attacked one hog twice with piercing. Uh, beyond that, everything else seems to be in good damage, having done cold damage. And cold damage, force, and piercing. So... Uh, hog 3 is a bit more damage, but everything else, all the other hogs are in good condition. So what do you do with the bodies? 
He just wanted the pelt, right? Yes. So we could probably just field dress it, get all the pelts. That's what I'm thinking. Necessarily necessary, well, isn't it? Let's start. Whoever wants to do this, start with four three. It's most, it's most damage. She's gonna feel first. Bailey's gonna kind of pike up. He says, "Listen, uh, I have perhaps if you're going to skin these beasts, perhaps we uh." Do this in the safety of the mines. Let's load up their. Uh, let's load. Uh, let's load them up in the mine cart and bring them further in. Uh, that works how too. Long been, how long have you been walking for? Uh, approximately fifteen minutes. That's it. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna pull my cane to the side and say, "Well, this is all we came here for. We could. We could, we just could, turn around. We could just turn around. Each. Each take a. How much do you think they weigh, Nathan? Roughly." Uh, maybe 70 pounds per. So, we could each drag something. Yeah, Very that's true. Kojul's pretty strong. He could probably carry two or three. I am pretty strong as... A werewolf. As a werewolf. I don't know, I just want to be sure. I could get, yeah, I get advantage on strength checks. So... Do we just beeline it back then, or do we help these guys out because they helped us? I mean, we could get help them, and then we can gain experience for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. It's always, it's always good to get extra experience, you know. It is. And it's not like they're going to go mining, right? Which is also going to get you some money. What do you we'll get say, money we, and experience and potentially... We're, we're here now. Is that the idea? It's yeah, up to I you guys. So. It's up to you guys. I'll leave it up to your hands. Choose however you wish. I wouldn't mind another 20,000 gold. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if we kill them, we can take their share. <laughs> make sure Jesus, they make Steph! Uh, <laughs> no. I, I disagree with Steph. But I do want money. That was a joke. Was okay. A joke. Jesus. I don't trust your character to make that a joke. Listen. Okay? Listen. After the okay. amount of people I've seen you yes. kill, I don't I've trust that as a joke. I've killed gang members. I haven't killed anybody that wasn't involved in the games. Why am I you specifically remembering killed. a time when there was a lot of bunnies in the area and then you threatened a girl with a, at knife point? That was another life, though. That was another <laughs> <laughs> no, I was thinking of that uh, that poor, just defenseless robber that you just straight up murked in the middle of a street. Oh yeah, that's oh, right! Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, you just murked him straight in the street. You didn't care who or what was watching you. You just went over there and just stabbed him right in the face. Did care? He is in the crowd. No, he yeah, yeah, didn't. No probably saw that. They didn't run. There wasn't any crowd. Uh, he remember. I uh, remember he kidnapped the kid and tried start. I'm tried running away. So he made it out, but he made it out of the larger part of the festivity before Savan brutally stabbed him in the face. Oh no, no, no I'm talking oh, no, about that the was one a different guy. Oh wait, yeah, that's a different guy. On where we were protecting the, the the books. The books. Wait, the books. God, I've killed so many people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I back. know you've killed a lot of. People at this point. Wait, I you guys. Uh, I rest my case. You're confusing your kills, okay? That's a problem. I forgot that I have to make a kill count for staff because that shit would be so funny. I have to make an oh. active kill count. I think we're at 14 at this point. Well, yeah. <laughs> Alright, alright. Fair enough. <laughs> I won't make jokes anymore. <laughs> No, you're fine to make jokes. I don't know, because Tojul might take it a little too seriously, and I don't want to set up this. I won't lie I and say that I was each time. I will just question it each time. I won't lie and say that I wasn't thinking that you were going to actually murder these other guys, okay? No, no, I've made a, I've made a promise that I'm only going to kill bad people. Oh, okay. So far, only bad 99 people. 99 of the time, I've been good. 99% of the <laughs> Actually, yeah, well, that mean, is the true. Was, the guy wasn't gonna steal shit, so, like, he's clearly not a good guy, so. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know. 
Valid point. <laughs> okay, so what's the jurisdiction here? We'll go. We'll, we'll go. We'll go. Alright. Okay. Nice, I'll keep going. <clears throat> um. Alright. So, having defeated all the hogs and uh, stowed their bodies inside of the cart for now, you guys continue your, um, to travel for a while longer. The sun beaming down you on you the whole while. Every few hundred feet, another creature call is heard, um, is heard, but distant. It takes you about. How? Hmm? Sorry, sorry. How long are we gonna? How long? Can I ask just real quick, like how long are we gonna travel for? Um. So Bailey's gonna pike how up. Much He's further like. Is the mark? From this distance, it's probably another forty minutes. Okay. Um, so yeah, you guys keep going, and uh, yeah, so it'll take you about another forty-five, uh, forty minutes to get to the mines. So the rest of the journey, despite being temporarily stopped and stop and go, as you guys hear the the cry of creatures coming towards you, seems relatively okay. You see a shelter with a locking door. That hugs this them um, the rock face of that I mean with tracks that lead into it. As you approach it, as you approach, Lorian runs up and opens the door, and runs back to help push the cart into the building faster. Once the cart is cleared from the door, he closes and locks the door behind him. All the miners smile. I mean, sigh, smile, and Hans even laughs. We're all right. We've made it. Bailey soothes the party. That actually went pretty well, all things considered. So, you guys are now within the mines. Um. Concern. One second. Brady, are you still with us? Currently up for about two or so more minutes. Okay, I'm gonna. For you, I'm gonna roll for you, but for everyone else, I'm gonna have you do a couple things for me, okay? Um. So, you have my character sheet, right, Nathan? I do, but you're not going to need it for what I'm going to do. Um, okay, never mind that. Okay, you said your your strength was 18. I'm going to put that down first. Okay, so everyone, I want you guys to roll me one D100, a D20, and a D6. D100 is me. 20 Six. and a D6. Twenty-seven on the hundred. And one on the All right. Good rolls. Good rolls. Good rolls. Yeah, Low I'm right there good. with you. Low could be good. Mhm. Mm Twenty-two for the D one hundred. Okay. Seven for the D twenty. All right. And then at least I got a six on my D six. You got a 6 on your D6? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to let you keep that D6, but I'm going to tell you something in a moment. Stefan? 575. 5. 575. Five. Five, five. Wait, hang on. How do I switch back to my character? 5. What do you mean switch back to your character? I'm assuming I'm no longer a vampire. Oh, okay. oh then cool. you just yeah. do the same thing. You remember how you did it? Yeah. Uh, it should. There should be an, a way to undo it. Yeah, just re-click the werewolf, and you should turn back. All right. So five fifty-five and five on the D twenty. Five seventy-five five. Five seventy-five five. Okay. Uh, Brian, sorry, that was twenty-seven. Six. 22 for the 100. 22. And 7 for the D20. 7 for the D20. And then 6. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Brady, I'm going to roll for you. Random rang. So while I do this, I'm going to have you guys... Um, I actually wrote, writ down, wrote down a small contingency. Brady, you rolled an 89 on your 100. I made a rule. Right? 
behind the scenes. Any player who reveals backstory information during the conversation with the miners gains advantage on the mining rolls. So, if you guys want to re-roll, the option's there for you. It's going to be... Is high good, or... <laughs> high is good. High is good. And you guys rolled low. Except I think I want to re-roll all of mine, because it, a d6 doesn't get any worse than one. <laughs> True. Wait, do I, do I have to well, pick it's two ones I roll? Or can I, can I re-roll all of them? You can either... It's yeah. advantage or a re-roll. I'll give you advantage. Okay. That's better. Four. Okay. Okay. Two. Two on the D6. Well, you might as well just re-roll anyway. It's advantage, so you can just take the best. Okay, so Brant, right. sorry, it was a for your D100. Sixty-four. Sixty-four, nice. Nice Minecraft stat. Uh, your D20 was. Eleven. Eleven, better. All right, and your D6. Two. Two. Okay, that's better. Minor improvements. Minor improvements. Uh, okay. Stefan. Nineteen seventy-five five. Nineteen seventy-five five. Okay, Brian. Um, sixty. Oh wow, much better. Yeah, okay. uh, I'm sticking with the seven from my D twenty. Okay. And then my oh, six. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you? What'd you roll lower than a seven? A six. Oof. <laughs> oh, I got a six. <laughs> Could at least get like an eight or something. Oh, Brady why not rolled a nat 20. Hell yeah. I mean, at least the 60 is better than the 22. Hell yeah. So. Yeah? Still here. <laughs> <laughs> at least Brady's rolling well. Okay. Yeah, Brady's a goat. Brady's dice are goaded right now. <laughs> Ooh. Now. Um. Alright, I gotta go. Question, DM. Yeah. Where's that? Okay, wait, okay, wait, Brady, you got 32,000 gold pieces. 32,000? Yes. Question, DM. Yes. Okay, DM. Yeah. Can I use my inspiration? Sure, but only on one of the rolls. Okay. <laughs> I wonder. It oh, seven. <laughs> Well, it's now a 13 for my D20. Nice! That's much better. better. Okay. So I've kind of gone is. back and forth on how I wanted to do this specifically because I was... Everything that I was going for was ridiculously high. So this is what we came up with, right? Brian, I'm Brant, you managed to find a, a vein of copper. Uh... And through your, my, I mean, uh, I'm going to assume you guys were mining for maybe about six to eight hours, right? In that time, Brian and Brett, you made sixteen thousand one hundred ninety-two gold pieces worth of copper. Okay, Stefan, you made twenty-five thousand six hundred and fifty gold pieces. Brian, you made eleven thousand seven hundred, and Brady made thirty-two thousand. 40. Um, this is value of material, right? Uh, Brant, you mined copper. Brady mined gold. Safan mined platinum. And Brian, you found a, a, a vein of Titan's blood. Nice. But its value isn't that high. Like, like, uh, Brian, on the wall. Hmm? I'm yeah. assuming Brian just didn't find a lot. You just didn't find a whole bunch. Titan's blood is scarce, but valuable, right? Besides, I was trying to figure out some way I could make this all work, and everything else was going crazy high, so... So, now we have to refine it? What's that? So, do we have to, like, refine it, or... No, nope, Titan's blood is just Titan's blood. So, how many, like, vials would that be? Um... You know, they would definitely be gold vials, but because I... They'll get back to us on that? Pretty much, yeah. Let's say, um... 
Yeah, I'll get back to you on that. Because I'm still... I was trying to work out Titan's Blood today, but then this weekend, and then this week during work. But, sure enough, um, I was actually busy this week at work, so... I didn't actually get to work on it as much as I wanted to, unfortunately. I'm going to say it's 11,700 gold pieces worth of Titan's Blood, right? And then I'll do the conversion rate afterwards. Um, so, there's that. So I we don't add this money to our... Board, not right? yet. But once you guys safely make it out of Liver, you guys will have, they'll have a vendor where they sell all their stuff to. Um. Yeah. So, the question is, um, if I had sixteen thousand gold pieces worth, that's twenty five thousand gold pieces worth of platinum or whatever it is gold. This is trade goods. How are we gonna carry? The minecart. Yeah, we do have minecarts. Yeah, but like back to the Uh, what do you mean? So you're gonna you're gonna be bringing it back to the base, back to the camp. And the and the, and the vendor will be there. Uh, yeah. So they'll have the vendor either come in, and the vendor will take care of it, uh, or what I'm trying to say is that you guys don't need to worry about it. They'll have their right. they have contacts. Sorry, real quick. You said Brady had thirty. Yeah, because he rolled an eighty-nine on his D one. He rolled an eighty-nine on his D one hundred and a nat twenty on his so, D twenty. So, so Brady found six hundred and forty pounds. Sure. Listen, the original plan had. You guys can't take in count your carrying capacity, the time of where, how long you were in the mines for, and the value of the materials. Well, we could just stay longer. Assuming everything was perfect, you guys would be making a million dollars a trip, right? And that was a bit much. So this is the tune back version. I don't really care about the logistics. If you guys do, don't. If you guys want to pretend like you guys have 600 gold pounds worth of gold, sure. We can pretend like you have 600 pounds of gold. If you just want to take the money that I'm giving you, you guys could take the money that I'm giving you. I think Brent speaks for all of us. I would just like to take the money. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm being a generous DM. Do you want okay. to carry about logistics? Because um, we're, we're splitting right. this. With the other guys too, right? Nope. This is your money to keep. Oh, okay. Just as their money is theirs to keep. You mine. You make your. Um, you make what you're worth. You make uh, your. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's why. Unless, of course, we kill them like halfway back and just take all of it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then Nathan has to re-roll uh, for seven people. Oh man. Yeah. You just make it a flat twenty-five grand each, and then you know. Make it simple. <laughs> like $350,000 divided by four. Yeah, but these guys are innocent. Up to 400000 um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, we're not going to murder innocent people. Right? <laughs> God is not planning on murdering innocent people. <laughs> we're trying to be good at this session, in this campaign. We're trying to be good, Brian. Stop uh, yeah. tempting me. Stop tempting us, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Either way. Okay. Um. So, we're going to say... How long do you guys want to have actually spent within the mines? Right. I did determine that. Let, let's just say eight hours for now. Right? So. I know, right? I'm sorry. That sucks, eh? Yeah. Either way, uh, but think about it this way too. You're earning your yearly. Uh, well, Brady almost earned my yearly salary in one mining expedition. So um, it's a good idea that we keep this. If we ever need a bunch of money, we can always come back. Mm-hmm. 
High risk, high reward. That's the liver. Um. Philanthropists hate this. <laughs> Philanthropists hate this. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, if you guys want dis to distribute the wealth between yourselves, I'm more than game. That having been said. I can actually. I made a spreadsheet, so give me one second. Also, uh, I am not selling any of the Titan's blood. I'm keeping that for us. Once we find out how much Titan blood it actually is. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you guys made a collective 73,882 gold pieces. Uh, no, not including the Titan's blood. Not including. Oh, sorry, the that was seventy-three thousand eight hundred and eighty-two. That's collective. That's collective, right? Uh, individually, it's eighteen thousand four hundred and seventy-one. Eighteen four seventy-one. Eighteen four seventy-one. Not bad. Mhm. Mm Okay, so you guys left the camp at approximately 8 a.m., right? Uh, given eight hours of travel, no, sorry, no, sorry, given one hour of travel, given the whole situation with the beast landing on the roof of your shelter, um, that would land you into the mines at 9 a.m. Doing a night, an eight-hour shift would get you guys out for math. Four hours, three hours to noon, five hours after that, five, right? So it is now five o'clock. Um, you guys still have ample time to leave and get back. Yeah, it's 5 p.m. took us an hour to get here. Mm hmm. It might take twice as long because you have to push heavy mines. Exactly. So. Hey, Nathan, is there the minecart, minecraft equivalent of like minecraft, minecart with a furnace in it? You know, <laughs> I, as fun as that would be, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, so what do you guys say? Shall we help? Shall we head back? All right. So, there's a teleport compass. I'm just going to bring us all. Okay. So, as you guys begin um, begin to wrap up your journey into the liver, Bailey is going to confront you all and say, Alright, good work today. We managed to get a lot of resources, and of course, you know, that means a large payout. We're going to go back out there. Try to make our way back towards the camp. As you know before, listen to your team lead. If I die, Lorian is next. If he dies, it's Sario. We're getting closer to nightfall. Therefore, we can expect more activity from beasts. If you see if we see anything, we'll try and reach Salta as soon as we can. Be calm, be resolute, we'll make it together. Does anyone have anything they would like to say or do before we go? I'm assuming okay. we uh, gutted the boars too, right? Yes! Actually, here, who wants to do the, who wants to do the, uh, the carving of the pelts? <laughs> well, I feel like it'd be a dexterity thing. Can I help with like investigation to like tell him where to like cut or like history if I would have read about this somewhere? Hmm. Since this is skinning an animal, I'm partially tempted to say this is going to be a survival check because you have to. This is a skill you would have developed 
hunting animals in the wild, right? You know, preparing an animal for a feast, right? You have to take the skin off um, so you can eat the meat, right? So I'm tempted to say that that's a survival check. So fam, what's your survival? What's well, Brady's survival? <laughs> that's a good question. Well, uh, I think he sent me his character sheet in the past, but I don't, re I don't have it on hand. I, 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 I thought I was. His survival's is, his survival's pretty good. Yeah, but okay, good. No, wait. <laughs> so fan got a nat twenty. <laughs> yeah. I thought I was gonna roll, so I just rolled it. Uh huh. Well, you were good to roll it. Okay. Well, good job, Steph. So these pelts are immaculate, right? Immaculate. From years of hunting by yourself, Steph, you know how to skin a boar. Come on, this is easy peasy lemon squeezy. Doesn't even take you all that much time. You just go soup 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 soup. Okay, here you go. Seven pelts. Now one of the t one of the pelts was damaged because uh, Victorin just decided to stabby stabby. But. Beyond that, you have seven immaculate pelts of liver, uh, of uh, liver, wart, hog, hide. Um, you do also have. Do we bring have them all seven, or do we sell them and only bring them one? It's a good question. <laughs> I will also remind you guys that you guys have a bag of holding. So. Um, we only needed to bring him one, right? True. Yeah. And how much? Do we know how much they sell for? He didn't give you a number. Well, we could break him like one a, and do all the rest. Really no. This was to show that we could actually take care of ourselves. And that you're willing to listen and receive instructions. And uh, if, you're, if you're stupid enough to go into the liver, then you could be trusted. You could always make a deal of well, here's the one to show you, the one that we decide to bring. Here's another five. Maybe you could sell them, we each take a cut. Who knows how to... Or what to do with them. And it would still show that we are on good terms with we are including him in it. That's true. It's a very good idea. So says God, so it shall be. <laughs> So, shall be. Sorry, I missed that last part. So, it shall be then? Alright. So, as you guys are given the go ahead to open, uh, to open and exit, um, everyone begins to pr do preparations. Um, and sure enough, um, I'm gonna say that Toujours is on the card duty again because that gives Bailey the opportunity to go forward and scout. Uh, is it safe to assume we would have had time for a short rest at some point? Sure. Okay. It's eight hours. I don't see why they wouldn't take a lunch or something. Can um, I? Can I uh, have my bow out? Kind of. Cautiously walking along the side, trying to keep uh, an ear and a nose out. Sure, I will give you advantage on because you're actively seeking things. I'll give you advantage on uh, perception checks. Um, I roll that now, or are you gonna ask for a roll later? I might ask for a roll later. Yeah. Um. So, you guys begin to walk down. Um. Lorian and Bailey, like, yeah, so they unlocked it, and then we begin, you guys begin your journey, with Tujur pushing the cart. You guys begin pushing the cart down towards the liver. I mean, down and past where you guys were going into the camp. Um, everyone is rather quiet, rather silent, and they're obs quietly observing stuff. Savannah, do you want to give me that check in a minute? In and now?
14. Yeah. Oh. You okay? So, you hear something in the um, Stefan. You're quickly alerted as something as you hear something in the distance. Whatever that, whatever it is out there, it's on your path, and it's waiting for something. I'd like to whisper a warning to if I'm near enough to Bailey. Mm hmm. That's interesting. And I'd like to cast Detect Thoughts. Okay. To see if I can detect any thoughts. So, let's see first. Let's see if he sees it. The animal. He doesn't see the animal. Or hear it. Um. So, first of all, he's going to be like. There's an animal on the tracks. Can you can you see it? I don't see it. Okay, and then with your detect thoughts, he goes, "Shit! What do I do? What do I do?" Uh, the next shelter is within two kilometers. Uh, we need to get to that shelter, if he's correct. Can I detect the thoughts of the beast there? Either well, it's, one you need you need a line of sight. You need line of sight, and right now you only hear it. Okay. Um, so you don't hear it, but you do... You don't see it, but you do hear it. So I'm going to say no on the detect thoughts on the creature itself. Um, okay, Bailey's going to pike up, and he's going to be like, okay... We have a shelter within two kilometers. Unfortunately, the closest one is down the tracks. We're going to have to remain stealthy, remain quiet, move slow, and hope that th this thing moves out of our way. The minute we gain eye light, I, I mean sight line of this thing, do not let it spot you. Hide amongst either hide either within the track or close by to it. Try not to gather attention towards yourself. So, that having been said, Lorian and Tijur keep pushing the minecart slowly under the guidance and supervision of Bailey. Let's do another roll for Bailey. Seven. He still doesn't see the creature. You guys progress for another 500 feet or so. Brian, like, is there a way to, like, can I stealthily... With keeping close enough that I can still see the group, can I start stealthing closer? Can you start... To see if I can try and get, like, an eyes on it, or... I is will like give you okay. Grass or something that I can try and hide in, so I can make. I'm gonna make you two do two checks. First of all, I want you to do a a, uh, a stealth check. <laughs> Thirty-seven. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I wish no twenty. Twenty. Okay. Those so yeah, you're things. you're in stealth. I mean, you're under stealth, so it won't hear you coming. But uh, and then I'm gonna have you roll. You're in a survival situation, so I'm gonna say survival. Mm. Ooh. Okay, uh, I rolled a five. Oof. But I'm going to burn an inspiration. Okay. How many more inspirations do you have? I have three total. Three okay. Total. Take away one. Sure. Fourteen. Fourteen. All right, that's better. This creature, though you um, as you kind of begin to peer up a more elevated section of the track I mean, towards the track you can see this creature sleeping on the tracks it is I'm gonna make it visible for you guys it's sleeping on the tracks uh, and this creature looks rather gaunt
It looks like it's been um, waiting for a while. Uh, can I point my book at it? I don't know if you see it yet, Brant. I don't know. Do I hear them talking about it? I uh, stealth up ahead, so... Uh, I, haven't I haven't come back to the group yet to tell you guys that there's... Okay. Yeah, it's just the one book we have, right? No, he gave you all a copy. Oh. Oh, so I can use my own book then? Yes, you can. Then I would like to put my book at it. And... Okay. okay. Um, so sure enough, uh, I don't have the thing pulled up. Yes, I do. Here we go. So, you, Stefan, pointing your guide towards the creature. Um, the pages flip towards one entry. And it takes a moment going through hundreds of pages, going deeper and deeper into the book. And suddenly the book suddenly stops and flashes a hologram in front of your face. A Dawn Silver. Category 8, Liver Beast. Do not engage. Seek caution. I mean, seek caution. I mean, seek shelter, and wait it out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I shall. I will try to stealthily get back to the group, mm -hmm. and I will find Bailey, and I'm assuming Bailey will be near him. Ah, uh, that depends on Brant. What's going on? I would, well, I don't, I don't know if I'm near the front or the back, I'm just kind of in the crowd. Okay. I probably would stay near the group, out of comfort. Sure. So I'd be hanging around. Two, two. Okay. So then I'd go to Bailey, motion to uh, to Blue that he should come over, and uh, I'd probably see that and step up too. And I I apologize, Nathan, but I do not remember the name you just. Don Silver. Me. A Don Silver. So I tell him there's a Don Silver up ahead. Looks gaunt. Looks hungry. Looks like Shit. he's probably waiting for us. He's gonna say to himself, he's gonna say, shit! Uh, what, what was it doing? It looked like it was waiting for us. Looks like it might be trying to set an ambush. Is that okay. the vibe I got, really? Hmm? That's the vibe I got, right? It looked like it was sleeping. Oh, shit. Okay. My bad. <laughs> it's okay. I, for some reason, that registered wrong. Okay. No, I, I could see why you'd think that. It looked gaunt. It was lying on the tracks. I mean, it could be interpreted that this thing was waiting in an ambush. So it's either waiting in an ambush or it might be asleep. I can't. I didn't get close enough to be one hundred percent certain. But it's lying on the tracks. Yeah. Cool. So we could probably sneak up, hit it really hard, really fast, to take it out. With. He's gonna. So Bailey's gonna pike out with seven of us. We might have a chance, but <sighs> it's quiet enough. We can get close. Eight, four, six, eight, oh, sorry. That's right. Eleven of you, because there's seven yeah. of them and four of you, right? So it would be eleven. So eleven of one. Our odds are good, but are we willing to take on these risks? These things are known. To attack, but primarily only when they're hungry and need to eat. But if your report is correct and they said it appeared gone, perhaps it's already past that threshold. We might stand a chance of attacking it, but I will not do it unless we have unified support from everybody. I say we go. I'm in. Let's do it. Uh, real quick, I'm going to do something for anything. Well, I guess eight hours have passed, so I would have lost my major. So do that again. Mm -hmm. so thinking about it, and I'm gonna activate my pearl power. To get a second. What sorry? Pearl of power. 
Oh, I thought you said you were gonna activate your girl power. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> go oh. girl power. Donna. Okay. This is a new ability I haven't heard of. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Pull out the Titan's blood grenade. Oh. We've been wanted to try this. <laughs> Interesting. I gotta look at. I gotta look at. Uh, oh, full trick. And I'm just gonna pull out the spell scroll of chain lightning and look at him. <laughs> <Fun to play. laughs> um. So you hear a couple uh. voices pike up behind you. The voices of uh, uh, Lorian. He will agree. Um, Lorian will agree. One second. I need the. I need the rest of the names. Not the right page. Uh, Lorian will agree. Sariel will agree. Victorin will be like, oh, fuck yeah, let's fuck some shit up. Uh, Hans will be like, yes, I think this is uh, indeed possible. And Logan will be like, yeah, so I'm ready for a good story. Perhaps this will make a great song. But, you see Pal Chakra. Um, Chubble Kirka, kind of like t fiddling with his hands, uh, kind of dancing his fingers along his staff, very clearly nervous. He kind of stutters. I mean, um, I think maybe we should just like find shelter. Maybe it's just it's just safer. It's just it's better. It's better. I, I gotta speak up to the kid. It, it's a kid, right? Or not like little literal kid. But Nah, not really young. He's kind of more like maybe in his 30s. Oh. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk up to him, grab him by the shoulders, and say, and I'll say to him, Why are you here? <sighs> My druidic circle. They exiled me because I was. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't defend when orcs raided our circle. They sent me here to toughen me up, to. To make they me sent you to tough, to toughen you up. So this is this is your retribution arc. You need to jump on this opportunity. But 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 what if we die? No, no buts. There's what if no we buts. die? Then we die. Then life wasn't worth living anyways. Okay. But you life is worth living. I mean, like there's there's like books. There's uh there is uh. Perhaps this is not your calling. If I'm I'm a druid. I'm just a you druid. Don't have I don't have to be a druid. Is this something you want to be? I was born into my circle. And this is the life of only uh, this is the only life I've ever known. Either get on board or get out of my way. It's simple. He's gonna drum his fingers for a bit more. Can you roll me a persuasion? Hmm? Oh, sorry. For persuasion. I got plus five Fuck. Still twelve. Okay. Um, he'll kind of, he'll you know be, what, uh, do I have, do I have any, hang on, hang on, hang on, so he'll drum his fingers along his staff for a moment, and he'll go, okay, I'll, I'll try, I'll try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say to him, hmm. what is something that your your Jewish circle, and I'm kind of hinting at the fact that if I gave this kid, this 30 year old kid, polymorph, what would he turn into? Well, he also does have uh, he does have polymorph. He's a druid, but well, he has wild shape. Sorry, right? So, but something fierce. So his uh, his circle would be on the north. Um, no, Southern Humorous, and there their most probably formidable uh, animal enemy they might find is either like a bear, an ant, or um, a creature of uh, the Palestine forests. We have a scroll of polymorph. Mm hmm. We could always turn it into like 
a mouse and then just trap it under something. Interesting. It, but trap it under something. Interesting. Yeah, it's a possibility. We can just keep it in mind if things start to go south. I can turn one of us into a beast. I kind of... I was thinking about maybe An trying elephant. sneaking up. And then just trying to see if I can get the grenade in its mouth. And then just, <laughs> 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 just see if it head pops. <laughs> I will warn you, this does have a 20 foot radius, so... Pull the pin and run. We okay if I try this? Yep. Uh, Nathan. <laughs> yes? I don't know how this book would even encapsulate game mechanics such as hit points or AC or anything like that. Mm -hmm. so would we have any idea of how robust this thing is? It's a category eight. They get their they get their categories based on how strong and how likely it is to attack a person, right? With a category eight, it's a hunt if hungry, right? So basically these things can attack humans, but will generally try to avoid it. So you're looking at uh, you're looking at a bit more of the higher echelon of monsters. I say we try it. Alright. So, let's give this a go. Stefan, I'm going to have you roll two stealth checks. One when you're approaching it, and one when you're at it. Okay. Um, first roll is a 20. <laughs> okay, nice. Sneak up on it. Sure. Twenty-one. Twenty-one, alright. So, the creature doesn't hear you moving. Uh, it doesn't hear you behind it. The soft sand underneath your feet, your, underneath your feet actually work to really dampen the sound of your footsteps, only making your journey towards this creature ever more quiet. You hear the beast inhale, deep exhale. And this beast seems gaunt hungry. It seems to be resting, resting, basking in the sunlight. Um, and as you approach the beast, it doesn't seem to notice that you're there. But something seems off. And I'll leave it there. Can I try and perceive what I feel is off? Yeah. Do an animal Can check. Animal check? Animal. <laughs> what? Uh, not one. Oh! You still have inspiration. Oh, I have inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was about to go badly. Alright, interesting. Can I use multiple inspirations, or just... One at a time. Like, like... So I can't, I can't Baldur's Gate it? Hmm... How about that? Like, my last inspiration, and like I could just, you know, then I don't have any. I rolled higher than. Okay, I rolled I rolled a d20 to see, and I will allow you to. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I rolled a nat 1 and then a 2. Ooh! <laughs> one more nat 1. If you get a 3, it's time to put that dice in jail. No, I got a 10. Not great, but maybe I can gain something. Based on its, something? based on its pattern of breathing, and based on the way it's moving, this creature is not asleep. 
this creature is just basking. Okay, and, but and I and I know it hasn't seen me yet, right? It hasn't seen you yet. Okay, <laughs> I would like to do <laughs> two things really quick. Okay. <laughs> So, because of my cloak, mm -hmm. I can cast web. Okay. And I can cast 40 feet of it. Okay. It lets me cast double the amount of space. Sure. So, can I unpin the grenade, throw the grenade at the thing, throw the web on top of all of it, like on top of the grenade and on top of it, trying to trap it in place with the grenade? Yeah, you could. And then book it. Sure. Okay. That's what I would like to do. I'm going to pull right. the pin, toss the grenade, throw down all the web I could throw, and then like just book it. I want you to roll me to hit just to see... I'll, um, Yeah, if you can actually throw the grenade in a place where you can web it. Uh, say that again, Steph? Uh, Brian, ready? Brant. Wow, everyone but me. Apparently, right? <laughs> say that again, Brant. Can I prepare an action where if it gets up and starts running at me, I can break across it? Yeah, by all means. Um, Alright, Steph, that rolled a hit. 16? 16. I'll allow it. Alright, so the just quickly before I start painting this scene, uh, is Webb a... Strength saving throw? Is it a dex of thirteen? A dex of thirteen. Okay, let's uh quickly do something real quick. Uh, roll. Yeah, it very much passed. Um, but here's the I'll, I'll paint it first, right? So, Stefan, basically. In one quick, swift motion, you pull the, the pin from the grenade, chuck it at the beast, and cast web. Your web catches the grenade and launches it towards the creature. Um, the cre I mean, the web lands onto the creature, and it feels the grenade land upon its back. It wakes up in a furious roar. It roars aggressively. The web, I mean, the webbing does not hold him down, but it does keep the grenade on his back. You have five seconds. Four. Run. Three. <laughs> two. <laughs> one. Brian, how much damage did that diet, that grenade do again? 5d6 piercing, 5d6 necrotic. 5d6, okay. Um, roll. Uh, he does have to, oh, I guess, yeah, never mind. I was gonna say he has to make a DC... 15 deck saving throw, but considering it's attached to him... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's 1d6, correct? No, wait. 6... 5d... It's 10d6, half piercing, half necrotic. Okay. Okay, one second. Okay. Hang on. Is equal to... This... Plus this, plus this. Hang on. Plus this, 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 and that is a total of 33 damage. Yeah. All right. So, um... Entangled by the webbing, the grenade explodes on the creature's black back. You see a large chunk of flesh rip from the, the creature's back as it hurls and cries in pain. The creature rears its head towards you, snarls, and charges towards you. Okay, so my thing goes off first? Yeah, you're, um, you're, bon you're, uh, you're prepared to attack. Prepared Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Does a nat 20 hit? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, max damage for eight. You 
du uh, you just double it, or you do max damage plus roll? That's max damage plus, uh, yeah, yeah, max damage plus roll. Okay, 16 cold damage, mm -hmm. and he has minus 10 feet of movement. 16 cold damage and minus 10 feet of movement. All right. So with your prepared action, Brant, you cast Ray of Frost, and it and perfectly encumbulate, um, uh, encumbers the, the the beast's legs. It cries out once again in a roar of pain, and it charges. It tries to run towards you, but with its lessened movement speed, it only makes it to about here. Um, it can't do anything from its given spot because everything it has is um, not ranged. So, I will give you guys another turn. Um, quick question, DM. Is mm -hmm. there any loose, decently sized boulders, like between one and five pounds around me? Uh, yeah, I would say so, probably. Okay. I want to cast Catapult. <laughs> okay, so you can launch a thing, and it has to make a... Uh, Dex 14? Dex 14? Yeah. Uh, it passes. Okay. Okay. I failed to save. The object strikes the target and stops moving. So that's it? That's all you can do? It doesn't say if... Oh no, it still takes damage. It does? How much? Okay, yeah. It just, it stops moving if it... On a failed save, the object... Strikes the target and stops moving. What? That's... okay. So um, I'm, I'm it'll be 3d8. Wait, what? But then when the object strikes something, the object and what it strikes each take 3d8 bludgeoning. Really? How much would that be without? If it fail, if it passed, or failed, because it passed its On check. On a failed, it literally okay. If the object would strike a creature, that creature must make a dexterity saving throw. Mm -hmm. On a failed save, the object strikes the target and stops moving. Mm -hmm. When the object strikes something, the object and what it strikes each takes three d eight bludgeoning damage. Yeah, because it's that's all it says. So then it probably doesn't do any damage when it succeeds. Oh, that's that's disappointing. Yeah, but it's also okay. not the what only level spell. spell is that? Sorry? What two? Level is uh it's a level one spell, but hmm. I was gonna upcast it as level two. Oh I see. Oh never mind. I said did I say three D eight yeah. bludgeoning damage? Okay, then I did cast it as a level one spell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whoopsies! No, 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 well, it missed, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay, fair enough. All right, so, yeah, you cast this catapult, and the creature, I mean, despite being slowed, actually, it would probably have disadvantage, because it's slowed and wet. I'll give you one more roll. 14? Yeah, deck yeah. save of 14. Yeah, it rolled, uh, it got a 24 now in its second roll, so, yeah. No, All right. right. Yeah, so it, it passed either way. Um... Yeah, so the creature manages to dodge the stone that comes towards you, um, seeing you load it up and use uh, this catapult spell towards it. It does not do anything. Uh, that gives us... Uh, I'm going to say Brady's not participating because I don't want to deal with his character sheet. <laughs> Alright, well, do you want to try and roll for him? Or play... Uh, Alright. He's doing that, I'll go. And I'll use my vicious longbow. All right. And I'll pull an arrow out of my uh, quiver. And as I'm pulling it out, I'm gonna draw it over my shoulder. And as the arrowhead goes by my neck, I'm gonna cut it, cut the side of my neck with the arrow. Nice. The side of your and neck. The, tip of the arrow. Yeah. All right. Dangerous. And, uh, tip of the arrow is gonna burst into flames. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna mm -hmm. draw back and shoot. <laughs> nice. 17 hit. 17 does hit. That's 
12 damage. Nice. Possible sneak attack? Mm, you'd have to justify that one to me. No. No. Alright. No I also attack. quickly forgot to mention that on my bonus action, I'm uh, casting the Blade Song <laughs> on myself. Uh, right, if it hits you, it has to make a save, right? Uh, no, it just gives me a plus four to my uh, bonus tasty. Okay, cool. Alright, uh, then it's going to be your buddy's turn. Bailey's going to go first, and he is going to attack with a great axe. Um, he goes an 18, does damage. That hits. And he's going to do eight damage, so um, let's just put that boop. And so Bailey is going to run up and whack at it with his great um, great axe. Then we have Sariel who's going to throw, I mean, who's going to use, who's going to throw one of his long swords, or well, hand axes, sorry. That's 16, he hits. He's going to do four damage. That sucks. So he's going to, where is Sariel? No, that's Larian. Yeah, he's going to go up to like there and throw his hand axe. Um, after that, uh, Sariel's going to go next, and he's going to charge up, and he's going to also, he's going to use his longsword to attack him. Uh, that's a 12. That doesn't make contact, but he's still going to make the trip anyways. Um, then we have Victorin, and he's going to use his short bow. That's a 25. That's hit. Um, he's going to roll, which does 10 let him damage. Um, and then Chubble Kirk guy is going to tune in. He's going to cast a uh, cloud of daggers on him, and that's a 10. All right. Sorry, do I get a turn because my parrot was not technically on my turn? Yes. That was your prepared. Sorry, I, I I just skipped over that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That, that's okay. This is kind of free flow anyways, right? Yeah, it is. Um, okay. Uh, I guess what I will do is chromatic warp with some light. All right. Eleven? Yes. That's that's not gonna that's not gonna hit. Do I, I do I have inspiration? I do. My my character thing says I have inspiration. Can I go inspiration? Sure. How many more inspirations do you have? I think that was it. Okay. Glad I did. That was a twenty five. Twenty five does hit. Jeez, all right. Okay. So that's uh, their turn. That's... Brady, Brady has not gotten back to me yet, so I think until he says anything, we'll just... Sure. Okay. Um, so it's going to be the creature's turn next. Um, the creature, seeing the, um, the barbarian charging towards it, he's going to make that one um, his first target. He's going to roll to hit. That's a 26. Uh, yeah, that's a contact. He is going to take... So he's going to first bite him. The, uh, so that's going to take... Oof. 12 damage. Um, then he's going to use two claws on him as well. One, that's a hit. And two, that's a hit. So that's another 18 damage there. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, he probably would have raged. Um, so wait, I did... How much did I do? And what's... Hang on. 
Yeah, I'm just trying to burn through their turns quick, so I'm not really paying attention to the full extent of everything that they can do. That's 12 damage. So he took a total of 30 damage that turn. Divide that by 2, that's 15. Um. Okay. Alright. Oh, he would probably also have an advantage, but he attacked anyways. Okay. So, that's his... That's the beast's turn. Um. Actually. Yeah, he's gonna do it. The beast. Seeing that it's got two people in front of it. And a lot of these other people behind it. It's going to start to glow. And in a split second. The beast uses Misty Step and appears there. Um, and on its next. Well, that's all it can do for its turn. But... Yes. All right. That's uh, their turn, guys. You go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, Brian, is Operation Lightning nuke yet? Uh, well, isn't Operation Lightning nuke more for multiple? Yeah, I don't remember. But it would be, but so I say it. save it. Okay, well, seeing that he's um, right in front of me, I'm just going to shock and grasp it. I'm okay. going to cast uh, Witch Bolt at second level as well. Cat? We will kill him with lightning anyway. <laughs> Alright, can you... Yeah. Dirty 20? Dirty, Dirty 20. 20, that's a hit. Okay. Damage? Um, uh, one damage, but you cannot take a reaction this turn. Alright. On his upcoming turn, he cannot take a reaction. Well, Cat? I guess reactions happen at some Yes. Um, does the 12 hit? 12 does not hit. God damn it. I am useless. Alright. <laughs> I'm sorry. Stefan, I mean, Brant, your damage? Me? Yeah. Uh, one. One damage? Yeah. Okay. One damage, but he doesn't get reaction. Got you. Alright. Um, Stefan? This thing isn't humanoid, right? No. Okay. Am I close enough that if I back up a bit, I will get uh, opportunity attack? Say it again, sorry? If I move back, will I get uh, an attack? Of, like, will he hit a, an attack of opportunity? So you are there. Uh, let's see. I'm. What's his ruler? Oh, he can't. He can't use a reaction. So no. Oh right. Yeah. So I'll back oh, up. that means I can run away too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> then I will fish this longbow. Mm-hmm. Not twenty. Not twenty. <laughs> oh my god. Is fish is the one where it does extra damage on the map. It does extra damage on the map. Oh my god. So, full damage is 8 plus 6, 14. Plus 5 is Is the 7 doubled as well? No, or? It, it, it would. It would. It's already like, saying it's on an at one. Yeah. I would, say I would say it's the same as well. Brady has a vicious crossbow. I don't okay. So, total damage, Def? 34. 34? Wow! Okay! Sure. Sh sure. Alright. Um. Stef uh, so that's Stefan's turn. Uh, Brant just went. That means. Uh, oh, and Brian didn't do anything. So that means. No, I did and I missed. Right. So that means. Uh, oh, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, for some reason, my ruler, my ruler is not working. Um, so, but he should have enough movement, I think. He, and Bailey's going to run up and try to attack him with another great axe weapon. 
That's another hit. Oh my god. Um, okay. Okay then. <laughs> wow. So he doesn't make contact, but now nah, Lorian's gonna go next. Nine. Huh? It was a hit, but he just didn't kill it. Uh, actually, he hits too. <laughs> so Lorian, uh, being where is he? <laughs> he here. He runs up and he actually, um, <laughs> taking one final blow at the creature. <laughs> um, the creature seems damaged, bruised, broken, and uh, frankly distraught. Um, Lorian. Then takes his longsword, jumps up, and pierces the creature's heart, and the creature drops dead. Guess want to know a fun fact? Sure. This was another deadly. This was based on a crystal dragon. It's stat blocks. So nice. yeah, you guys just good. took out effectively Young a. Adult. It was a crystal dragon on five e, whatever. Yeah, I needed something that had a high enough AC that I could use as reference. But, yeah. So, fun fact, that was based on a crystal dragon. Just so you guys know. <laughs> I mean, there was 11 of us, so... You're not wrong. And this is why they were pushing for you guys to join. Right? Alright, so the creature is now dead. Congratulations, oh, guys. Um, is there anything that would be useful to harvest off that body? Um, honestly, quite a bit. Uh, you can take its talons, you can take its teeth, um, it's also, its pelts not too un uh, unshabby for money as well. I'll take it all, or as much of it as I can. Alright, I'm gonna roll for you a new mirror. Okay, and you get 859 gold pieces worth of material. How much? 800? 859. Alright. And I'm assuming I can sell that when we get back to the... Correct. ...place with the rest of it. Okay. Alright. So, having successfully managed to... Um, Having successfully managed to kill the uh, the Dawn Silver, uh, you guys continue your way. Um, you guys continue your way back to Liver, and for the rest of the journey, everything seems pretty tame, pretty mild, and you guys actually did exceptionally well. Good job. Uh, you know what? I was thinking. Okay, the original idea was that when I was going to get l let you guys level up. This was going to be it. Um, back at like session four. <laughs> uh, so I thought that this, uh, when I first conceived the idea, it was going to be on session four, and you guys would get your level up. Because it's no longer session four, and you guys have already leveled up, I couldn't conceive, I couldn't think of an answer right away. So I'll get back to All you. Right, so, so what you're saying is because this is supposed to be a level up. Because it's supposed to be a level up, and I gave it to you guys prematurely because you were begging, I'll get back to you. Okay. I'll think about it, and I'll get back to you. Um, because the today and yesterday have been focused on actually getting this up and running, and rather less about leveling up. So. Alright. That having been said, you guys did very well. Um, I'm going to bring us all back. Um, so, and sure enough, true to their word, uh, they had a, um, the, uh, the miners had a, uh, um, a guy who was waiting here on the other side. 
this guy will buy resources and sell them to Hart, and Hart will distribute the resources as they deem fit. Right? So, um, you guys get all that money in currency. So, now your final total for money gained, considering, um, considering the new currency you guys got from the feeding of that monster, your, your grounded currency now, each person will get 18,685 gold pieces. So, announcements. Okay, you got it. Thanks, bud. Okay. So, yeah. 18,659 and 55, 85 gold pieces. That is... So shouldn't we all get 150 more and Brank gets... <laughs> X amount less? <laughs> because they got to make out the money you gave them at the start of the game. Sure. That works. Very altruistic. Um, I mean, I'm going to completely ignore that because I completely forgot to uh, take that 150 that I was supposed to give you out of my inventory anyway. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, that's what I got planned for you guys this session. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's that, sorry? The combat was fun. That's good. You guys did it very well. I, I, I assumed you guys would. That's why I'm like, yeah, they're probably going to fight a red... They're going to be fighting a dragon, but listen, this is my players here. They're going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and you got... We, you basically did that without either me or uh, Brady, too. You're not wrong, actually. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> point. Um... I think the highest amount of damage any one person did to it, um... Uh, oh, I, I already closed the tab. I think Stefan did, like, 43 at some point. Here, wait. Yeah, that was with the grenade. No, it wasn't. The grenade... Okay, so wait, 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 check this out. The grenade did 33 damage. Stefan just randomly did 34 damage. He did more Zero. damage than the grenade! Oh, Just yeah, randomly... <laughs> Oh, also, I was. I, <laughs> also, you guys want to see something kind of cool that I want to flex? Um, because I'm already streaming on Twitch, I'll just get you guys to direct that because it's just easier. Although, uh, quick question, just off topic, or before we get more off topic, mm -hmm. we're going back through Heart, right, to get back to uh, what's his name? I'm going to end the session here and we'll decide next session or well you... I, it was more of a if we're going back through heart because i have the cash now mm -hmm. i'm buying something else from that store oh sure okay yeah why not i mean it would be another eight hours of travel so you guys could take a, a long rest at the camp if you guys wanted to um sorry six hours worth of travel my bad another six it's hours just more so I, I don't forget for next time sure <laughs> So, why don't we end the session in heart once again? Um, we'll end this heart, this session in heart once again. Um, you guys, you can quickly do any more uh, purchases that you guys want. Just letting you know. Are you guys looking at the uh, the stream? By the way, you don't have to, but I think this yeah. is cool. Uh, I am now. But that's all right. Yeah, I, I got the thing that says no webcam detected, and I think that just chunk the bottom left corner. What? Oh, that's. How? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we all got it. What? I don't even know how to get rid of that. Has that... Okay, has that been there the entire stream? That's so annoying. Uh, yep. <laughs> oh, I get it. Okay, you know what? I will... I'm not going to worry about it because it's been there the entire session. I'm going to keep going. So check it out. Okay. Uh, I want to flex a little bit because this is cool as shit. Uh, every time I make an edit to the document, it will give me a random number between 1 and 20. So it's like I'm effectively rolling it. Uh, I roll... Uh, this takes into account the... 
um, the plus to hit. It takes account damage, because it's also rolling for damage, and that. Uh, it's also doing strength saving throws every time I edit the document. And it does a live tally on how much damage it does. Yeah. I think it's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I figured out how to do this last night, and I was like, no fucking shot. This is going to work? Yeah. So. Cool. Um, I was going to do that for all the uh, NPCs as well to streamline that process. Just that way I don't have to roll and it takes less time. Can yeah. Sure. I mean, it's not that hard. Uh, you see it right now? Yeah, so... Um, it's not that difficult. It just takes into account your strength modifier, what you've rolled. It takes into account... that I don't need that number anymore. Um, it takes... And then it... All it's doing is just multiplying these three numbers together. So it's going these two first, and then followed by that one. And because all of you guys shared some backstory information, I can't, I wrote it down. That way you guys remember. And what resources you guys mind, just for some flair. Yeah. Oh, I, I love Why, what's up? My strength isn't 23. I can't believe you thought that I was actually my strength. Was. Son of a bitch, you told me that in the chat! Yeah, and then I rescinded it. Did you? Yes. Yeah, if you look back. Oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> yeah, by the way, you're on strength for 23 is, man. It's a plus 6. You know what? Like, I knew it was wrong, but I'm like, you know what? I just don't care enough to double check. I'm just gonna put it down. <laughs> well, fine, because you wanted to be like that. I'm gonna nerf you. There. <laughs> son of a bitch. Well, I don't know how I feel about that now. I don't well, know, man. You have this <laughs> for next time we go to the mine. Oh, sure, right? <laughs> if your stats, if your if your scores don't change by then, right? That's true. I, oh, you know what? I I, I drank a potion of. Oh, okay, sure. And it just lasted you the entire day. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Alright, well, I'm gonna end this stream there. Perfect. Oh, uh, just quickly, I'm gonna.